we can we go off, off of what Jake just said on FaceTime? If you if you were in a cement box, no easy way out, and there was a nine millimeter a tub of ice cream and Doja Cat, who are you let, eating first? Let's hit the intro first. Who are Welcome you to the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> who are you obvious eating first? Answers. It's ten twenty four. Week Cat. before Halloween, we're starting off with what would you eat first? Doja Cat. Doja Cat ice cream or a nine? Wait, no, what no, flavor no. ice cream is it? I like. We'll say mint. Your favorite. Yeah, your it's favorite. your favorite. Your, your favorite. favorite. All right. All right. Would you rather have your favorite flavor of ice cream or your favorite flavor of woman? (laughs) Your favorite flavor of ice cream on your favorite flavor of woman or just one or the other? Okay, but I have a nine millimeter and I don't want to have to use it on Doji Cat because she laughed at me because I shit myself and I can't eat ice cream. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm going to go Doji Cat, nine millimeter, and then she can have the ice cream to Is that instantaneous for you? What? Like it like kicks in within 15 minutes. I get to burbling. Okay, but if you can't make her finish in 15 minutes, then your tongue game is garbage. Bubble guts. Mark, it's not about that. It's the fact that even after that happens, we're still locked inside of that cement box, and I'm not trying to poop myself in front of Doji Cat. What if she just busts a cap in your ass, and then you're done? You I know? have the gun. I think the gun just in the you, room. You're just going to survive after all that? Like... I'm going to shoot myself. Okay. But I'm going to make yeah, sure I don't have to saying. starve to death. So like, if I want to shoot myself, then I can. What if it's sherbet? Then I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Wait, is it? Can I? Wait, you said your favorite ice cream. So can I do like the vegan ice cream that yes, I used to get from Mitchell's? Can. You can do like oh, the then shirt, I'm the I'm gonna shirt. fucking cover Doja Cat's titties in vegan ice cream in sorbet. That's not what it sorbet. is. That's what it is. It's vegan ice cream. It's sorbet. No, that's not no vegan. Not ice all cream. the time. No sorbet is sorbet. I was say not all the time. There is like actual vegan ice cream. How do I know? Because I'm what's in vegan ice cream? Then I work with vegan ice cream. What is it just? It's like, like rice milk. Almond milk or it's rice, rice milk, milk or and oat milk. I'll just say. That's lame. I'm not really sure. I just know that at work I make a um make a strawberry vegan tart and it is disgusting. The cookie <laughs> tastes like the cookie tastes like ass and the ice cream. The ice cream is good actually. Yeah, the vegan good. ice cream is good. I mean that's fine, bad. but I'd rather have sorbet. I like the sorbet. It tastes like the fruit. You look like a damn sorbet fan. <laughs> I like sorbet. That's right. Fucking custard guy. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Custard, kind of hey, reason, custard though. be smacking. I ain't going to let no custard slander <laughs> exactly. fly around. He, he thought he got off with that one. Uh, <laughs> he thought you, he got off with you, that you, one. Why, why, why <laughs> said, custard is banging, boy. Why you got so much hate for custard? He ain't hey, never, nigga, just eat some ice cream. He ain't never been to East Coast custard. That's what I is. have. ECC game. I have, and it's not that good. It's just, I'd rather have ice cream. You're lame. Call it a day. Ice cream elite. Over here, you, are you, you're, so you're straight. a soft serve or no serve? Um, I don't know. That's hard. Um, have ever, wait, have you ever had the ice cream rolls? Like you know, like the the things they do with like the paint no. scrapers. Would you try it? Yeah, I just I don't know where to go. Good. They have it. There's one down here. So I, I gotta find it. Then to be honest, um, back to back to the original question you asked about the Doja Cat. <laughs> you know, you, you eating Doja Cat first. I don't give a fuck who you are. You're eating Doja Cat. First. I want. I'm I want. asking Doja Cat if I can eat her first. Well, yeah. Yeah, but does she know why she's there? No, you don't know why. I don't you're know there why I'm there. You're I just know that there's. Box. I just know there's a bad light skinned bitch, some ice cream, and a gun. And if she says I can't eat her first, wow, I'm eating that bullet first. What if you miss? And now you're just dirt, dirt. <laughs> if I'm a dirt, dirt, now you're just, yeah. now you're just Doja Cat gonna out. take care of me? No, she's just gonna look at you and eat the ice cream as you're just on the ground, can't move. And you're just like, can't you just can't do I'm shit. I'm gonna pray to God that she just just shoots me again. Well, if there's only one bullet and you fucked up. Then now I you... pray to God she beats me to death. <laughs> like <laughs> bashes my head in where the scar is. Like where the hole is, just finish. I thought that was I thought the goal was for her to suffocate you with her ass cheeks. I don't think she's gonna gonna put her ass cheeks on a special guy's face, Mark. Maybe it's pity. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's pity. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mercy that. kill. Uh, you have uh, mercy on your soul. One hell of a mercy kill. <laughs> right, have mercy fuck? on your soul. Oh, and she's, gonna, your... she's gonna hit me with the Rikishi stink face. Yeah, fuck it. The Big Daddy V. Oh, quick question, Phil. What's up? Um, just just gotta go away for the Doja thing. How you feel about? Did you watch that Costa fight yesterday? Yeah, I was surprised Costa's gas tank held up. Um, I I. I was kind of salty about the eye poke in round two that led to Costa getting a point deduction. I mean, it didn't cost him the fight or anything. But for as much as that was kind of annoying, um, I'm very pro actually taking points away from fighters. 
because there has just been a lot of horrible fouls or like continuous fouls in matches, and the refs will not take a point because of how drastic. Did they take they away points from DC in the Stipe fight for eye poking? Maybe no. one of them. Maybe no, one of that them was so points. egregious. The reason I know it's a I've no is because Phil complained about how they didn't take away a point. I remember after those fights, out, out of the fights I've been watching recently, just a lot of ball kicking, like not purposeful. Ball kicking. Yeah, like they're, they're kicking. Oh yeah, they're and like, kicking and other like niggas, all, like, all of it. Though I, I saw a compilation of UFC and Bellator, and them niggas really be kicking each other in the nuts. Yeah, <laughs> it'd just be like, wow, like, y'all just no one wants to have kids anymore. I guess. <laughs> Hey, this is, they this wear is, cups. It's more like a groin injury. I mean, with all the head injuries they get, you probably don't want them reproducing, to be honest. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, hey, They'd have some crazy ass children. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, there, you know, there's layers to that, and I think we should just move on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not everyone's out here going to be ben, Chris Benoit. Come on. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You got to be honest that. about it, Aaron. Chris Benoit didn't do it. Uh, that's crazy. He didn't Chris do Benoit it. Didn't do it. <laughs> that's did a conspiracy it. theory for the ages. Oh, Chris, that is a Chris that Benoit is a conspiracy. Did not, that is a big conspiracy theory that he people didn't do believe it. that Chris Benoit was set up by the mob or some shit like that, and and they went I, in. You know, I have a confession. Did the I mob did have in two thousand? What is it like seven or something? Whenever it happened, the mob still has power now. Like not like that. Like why would they go no, after yeah. Chris Benoit? Nigga, they, he because owed they, them money. Yeah, he owed them money. Like he, him, Eddie Guerrero, all those niggas were, were addicted to pills, and they weren't getting paid by WWE because they were getting suspended for taking the pills and getting caught. But the WWE gave them the pills at first. That's true. Well, I think allegedly. Well, no, the that pills works. that Vince was giving people was to make them look like he did on the cover of that, that like magazine. Bobby Lashley. The pills that they were taking were like, were like Oxy. Oxy and fucking Viking and they Viking. Were, they Listen, were what are you going to do when you're broke and you need some money? You need well, to get in the ring, I wouldn't right? say they're not, I wouldn't say they're necessarily broke, but um, who, who's a other uh, Jeff Jeff Hardy is a per, another perfect example of somebody who yeah, got nigga, he almost Hardy. killed himself in exactly. the ring and and like he, multiple times and he was barely paid for it. He jumped onto Jericho and he caught him and said, "Nigga, what is wrong with you?" And he was like, Ugh. and he's like, "Oh, okay, you're oxyed out right now." Yeah, you see, it would be so much simpler. They just let these niggas smoke weed. He jumped. I, like, I mean, back in the day, they used to just let him be coked out as much as they wanted to. Like, if you even look some stories from older wrestlers like in the late 90s and stuff you could get half of your pay and in, in blow and you could just keep going it's terrible like, yeah you're that like, sounds you're like some me? real ecw type shit yeah and i ecw was brutal like ECW EC- was racist did donald trump actually own the ecw no. or is that just a publicity it was stunt? no it was a um that was a wwe and that was a publicity stunt ECW because was the started was that he owned ECW and no, ECW WWE. was taken over ECW. ECW is a creation by Paul Heyman and Paul Heyman created it and he was the like the main like commentator of ECW okay. in, the, in the early later. 90s. Yeah, and then he got into WWE and then he like he let them buy it with the with the it was like with the one stipulation he could never be fired from WWE no matter what. Which is so lame because not lame because he's done so <laughs> yeah. much for them. I would say he's Heyman done. Is, yeah, he's, but he's, his he's his nice. character is just kind of his, blah. His no, his character his character is, is, is great. Great. He gave us the summer of punk. He gave us what the first and second uh, Brock Lesnar returns the revival. Yeah. He beat the streak with Lesnar. He had the feud with Punk with uh, Lesnar and Curtis Axel, and he kept a couple people alive because they were ass at fucking talking on the mic. Yeah. Brock Lesnar, Undertaker. Un- Undertaker. I would just say Undertaker. Undertaker never talked. He didn't until because he was part I was just had that gimmick. Like, like, yeah, the only he talked, time he, it would have taken so much away. The from only the time whole... he talked was that like Attitude Era when he came out in like leather pants and oh, came when out he, on he was mean. Mark, he was a biker, <laughs> the All American <laughs> badass. Listen, that but, was the, such a terrible storyline. Whoever wrote that, I hope they got they got fired. I don't know. Throw probably off a did roof it. or something. No, no they probably got fired. It. Probably no, did. No, they there's got no fired. I was say, like, there's got, going, no way. But going back to the whole the Vince EC the shit. entire ECW thing, it's it's like the WWE during the time, like I think like the late nineties, they were losing in the ratings war to um WCW, which was the biggest thing. And they had to do like a little bit more extreme things, something to get the fan base out there. And a little a lot of that was by doing what ECW was doing on a very smaller market. And that was just jumping off ropes, setting things on fire and like, just kind of like bashing people's heads in with 
with um kendo sticks because Dude, just a AEW is doing that shit right now. AEW is going to be the next WCW. They are going to take over the WWE's market. I and they're bringing back all the they're bringing back all the old stars. But that's the thing; they're doing the exact same thing that WCW did. But yeah, it's, and that's the entertaining. No, but factor they're not letting. Okay, the people don't understand. The people think that the NWO was a storyline for WCW. It wasn't. It was the it entire was legit lifestyle them taking taking it over, like them and that taking was the, the worst. Over. And that was the worst thing about about WCW is and um. I like for because you would compare NWO to let's say DX. The click. No, I say the DX. Maybe, yeah, I DX. wouldn't say DX because DX yes. was two what guys was who were part of the click. What was cool. the one that was Ric Flair and uh, Batista? Four, and, oh, um, um, Evolution. Uh, Evolution. Yeah, that's different. Mm, Way different. Is it Evolution? Way different. They were cool with the click, but like the people like X Pac, the people who were in DX, like Billy Gunn, all of them, oh, they were part like the of OG. the click. You're plus, the like the Undertaker squad. and Ric Flair. I th- and they ran the backstage locker room and like beat niggas up for not doing shit. I think that the best, the I'm um, not best, but one of the worst things about the NWO is they never lost. Like they would, they it was just a lifestyle, and they won every match they went out there play. And whenever they went out there, they just won. DX got their ass kicked. DX lost. DX was not untouchable. I feel like if but DX wasn't calling the shots, and they got broke up. NWO they, was calling NWO they existed without X for Bic- like ten years. Eric Bic- Bischoff was part because of NWO. I'm and I feel like that's the reason. That's another reason why I think WCW failed. Why is it like okay, cool, you're the shot callers now. When um, let's say when what's the face um, Goldberg, the, not Goldberg, um, Bret Hart when he came. I think if you would have made it made a storyline like okay, Bret Hart is taking at, um Sting and all these other people, and they're gonna actually go and compete and like actually rival and beat NWO. That's great. That's that's a good storyline. I was gonna say what? Who the only person to beat Hulk Hogan during the NWO phase was Goldberg, and then they killed him a week later, and he got he got his first loss at like the Great American and then Bash he or just, something. And then the entire the entire WCW locker room was just NWO at some point. Like Sting was NWO, Goldberg was NWO, yeah, no, they had, everyone they had, was NWO. They had Wolfpack. NWO Wolfpack was even worse because it was more backstage politics, but they just disagreed with what was going on in the company. And they were wearing these shirts, and it was like a gang war. And like the matches were rigged. What's it called when when wrestlers stop wrestling and actually start oh, hurting each other? That's a that's a shoot match. Yeah, they, they were shoot. having shoot matches like on just Monday Night Nitro, like not even at like pay per views. Like Listen, they were just beating so each other's ass. They're, the X Factor in WWE is like missing. It's it like, seems to be a lot of parody, a lot of uninteresting storylines. It's the same fucking it's, recycled storylines. I want to no. see when I when I tune into this fake wrestling shit. I want to see some Jeff Hardy shit. I want to see somebody jumping from the top of the fucking stadium onto somebody on you can't the map. Do that anymore? Um, now, why? It's because the PG era. I'm that's say, lame. It's the Universal era. That's lame. Well, you were at the wrong. That's era why of I'd rather watch. A, I'd rather watch either. That 2000 shit, or the Attitude Era shit, or midget wrestling. But that's okay, even, that was but, even more okay, interesting. But I'd, be, I'd rather watch Hornswoggle and Mini Me duke it out in a match than fucking uh, who, who Mini the, Me, <laughs> yeah, the Austin guy? Oh, that's El Toro. El yeah. Toro. Nah, my crazy. favorite was Lil Mini Me, like love, the guy from I Austin fucking Powers. Love El Toro. Lost Mentadores was cool. But I'm not. I'm, I think this era of wrestling. Is a lot more technical than it than it was in the past. Nobody wants to watch technical fake wrestling. No, because that's, that's things, not true. No, <laughs> because, no, because when you're like, like, okay, it's impressive to see Jeff Hardy jump off of like, da da da. But to see like some move sequences, like who I think it's Seth Rollins. He does this thing where he like superplexes you off the top rope. You somersault flip together, and then he picks you up and like Batista bombs you. Like shit, like that is cool. Like yeah, just regular cool, move sets like, are cool. There, but there's more boring moves and characters than there ever has been. And so okay, the, like when I'm I'm tuning into this shit, I want to see acrobatics. I want to see people flying all over the mat. So what you're saying is boring. They can go overseas to Europe or to Japan and 
they will get applauded. They would be, they would be rave like that's that's because overseas they that's is what's rewarded. Like well, that's actual tango they have rap. terrible taste in fake wrestling. I don't know what to tell them. I see that's crazy. Actually, no, not Japan. Um, New J- New Japan Pro Wrestling is like AEW and fucking. I'd AEW rather watch AEW. backyard wrestling. Backyard wrestling is fucking great. Go on YouTube and find a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing. Find trampoline. Busting their ass. You got to find trampoline so wrestling, but with the adults and not the kids. Because mm-hmm. I saw some dude go through three layers of plywood and the, what are the lights, the the fluorescent light bulbs off of a trampoline. Them niggas went into the air and came down on light bulbs. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm personally, I'm personally very interested and invested in this new storyline. A lot of the females, a lot of the newer females are amazing. The I'm so I was so sad Ruby Rose left WWE and went to AEW. I felt Good. like that was nah. AEW is more nah. interesting. AEW I, is about to be way more interesting. It's just they have better storylines. I think they're gonna. They're, I feel like it's just another WCW, and they're it's gonna get bought though. out. WCW the was more interesting. Gonna, the reason that they're not gonna get bought out is because they already broke the WCW chain when they brought in. The older wrestlers, they brought in the older wrestlers who care about the sport. Like Chris Jericho, perfect example. He was the first champion, but he was letting the new guys beat him. They were building new stars. They were using old stars to build new stars, and they weren't riding the coattails of, oh, these dudes used to be in the WWE. Come watch them wrestle. No, it's it's like this This is your old favorite wrestler. Come find a new favorite wrestler. He's fighting this dude. Or even the talented, the talented uh, dudes from... Because like who's the who's the champion now? He was like in SmackDown for like five six years. Oh, in AEW. Yeah, the guy who Is wears the, the leotard, the black dude. No. Nah, nah, nah. Can't not not AEW. Not, that's not Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose would no, never wear a like, fucking leotard. Oh yeah, this was a this is a black dude. He no, wears Dean leotard. Dean Ambrose fucking... got dogged. He's not even the AEW. He he's just doing like backyard shit. I saw him posted on his page. Dude, listen. Renee if you want to watch baby. real. Entertaining fake wrestling. Go on watch YouTube. WWE. No, no, go on YouTube. Watch, watch your backyard WWE. shit, and you'll either get the cringiest shit you ever seen in your life, and you can't stop watching it because it's so bad, or you see people getting their asses busted, and it's wildly entertaining. I don't think I want to watch just Joe Smo in the in his backyard trying to. But it's not Joe. Joe it's not Joe Robert. Schmo. It's like Cuckabuck Jim. So it's like even better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah. want. I don't watch. I don't watch Jim Bob from from Alabama. Fucking. You don't want to watch Billy Joe Bob Joe's... Steven beat up on a seventy year old woman. N- no, like, I do not. Remember, remember when we got really fucked up at your house one night? We were watching the the greatest table clips of all time from the one backyard yes. promotion, and it was like it was like crackhead white dudes who looked like they couldn't pick up pencils, like body slamming BBW white bitches through tables. <laughs> That's wildly. That's more, way more interesting than any shit that WWE puts out. So, it's pretty evident so far that all of us grew up watching wrestling, and uh, there's a lot of great moments to look over. But like, what are some of your guys' favorites? Vince McMahon saying the hard R. <laughs> that's a that's a cool way to start this, Mark. Oh, I was thinking about, like, right in front of Booker T. Explain. Right in front of the Booker T. He, he, he didn't say the hard R. He did not say the R. He said the hard R a different time. That was when he oh, said, my, what's my up, bad. my nigga? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> the one I'm talking about. He says it to John Cena right in front of Booker T. They had some and not just, racial storylines. Yeah, it was. They, they had fucking Kurt Angle walk around going, you know, I really don't like black people that much. Just yeah. Just like in interviews. Because their whole fan base was white trash at that yeah, point. it was right after they had bought ECW. That's Mo- why. Yeah, most of their, most of their fans live outside trailers and you know have a That's pickup not, truck from the 80s that is not true drink a lot of <laughs> and, and the drink 90s, a lot of pep blue and, ribbon i okay i will say this especially, now it's as, definitely more diverse especially no even in the 90s it was very diverse like you you a lot of people in the front rows were white yes it was but in diverse. the 90s they had they had a die hard they had a die hard black audience but it wasn't My, that big you're telling me you're yes, telling me the was. black audience no, had no. no problems with with uh John uh, John Cena. Getting, I'm not saying that they didn't have an issue with it. Sure, I am no, saying what the fuck are they going right. to say, Mark? It's the 90s. No one cares. And also, the, and also that another, wasn't the 90s. It was early 2000s. Another favorite moment of mine: John Cena <laughs> in the ring with Stephanie McMahon. And he's like, "Come on, baby. No one's Boobies. looking. <laughs> <laughs> no one's looking. Let me, let me feel, let me feel your butt cheeks." <laughs> In the middle of a sold out crowd with thousands of people watching. 
I'm not gonna lie to you. What is wrong this with is you? my. I thought we were talking about like personal, favorite wrestling yeah. moments. Like I was about to say and when fucking I love when the Edge shit. speared Buddy off the Money in the Bank ladder, and Mark's talking about some boobies. <laughs> I was going to say, one of you my... Can't tell me, <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about matches. That. I'm about That's to say, what I'm, I'm about to say, I'm like, oh. I was, I was right going to say fucking Matt Hardy and Matt Hardy and Lita versus fucking um, Stephanie and Triple H. One of, one of my all-time favorite matches. Um, the, three-way, the three-way match between Jeff Hardy, uh, between Jeff Hardy, Triple H, and um, Edge. That was, I think it was like a ladder match or something like that. That was one of... Um, that was one of my favorite matches. Matt all time. versus Jeff at 25 when he hit him with a twist of fate on the chair and broke his brother's neck or <laughs> broke his brother's neck. Who? <laughs> um, re- recent years, I would say the Shield versus Evolution. Those were the day after that match was the worst in in WWE history for me. <laughs> and Seth Rollins Oof. hit that nigga with the chair and Roman Reigns looked at him. That and was said, the biggest. Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> he this... just looked at. He didn't even swing. He was just like, bro, like what? Like, are we turning on him? He was like, we. <laughs> what do you mean by we? And he cracked that nigga too. Anything that does with this shield in the recent years, I loved. When they were fighting, when all three of them were competing for the belt and fucking, who is it? Um, They were fighting Randy Orton. I fucking loved it. When they oh, were, when they jumped that nigga? Yeah, they jumped him and they threw him to the table. I was like, oh my God, the shield. And they looked at him. He was like, yeah, pitch your arms. And they're like, fuck you, you betrayed us. Why we, we ain't here for you. And they whooped his ass. <laughs> Um, I would say Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose winning the title was probably the lame. the best best night of my life. <laughs> he said lame. Not nah, none of these did. new storylines are interesting to me. No, okay. My favorite moments are kind of the cringy shit, but like, I how you gonna say your favorite moment is John Cena feeling up the fucking no, owner's no owner's was, daughter listen, in the middle listen, of a sold Mark, out arena? No, no, I'm the that topic was some funny of weird shit, shit happening. Mark, to Mark's McMahon. favorite moment, the fucking drive through wedding, how she got married to Triple H. Oh my god, was ridiculous. Oh no, and remember the, when didn't she, he get raided by like the boogeyman or some shit? Really, really, and he uh, threw worms on him. No, I, was that Lita? <laughs> that was Lita. I think that was Lita. No, remember when um remember when Triple H and fucking Chris Jericho were arguing and then Triple H hit Stephanie with a sludgehammer on accident and then he tri- uh what is it? Jericho picked her up and took her and she was not on Raw for two weeks and then she no, came back Kane. with amnesia. It was Kane. No, no, it happened with Chris Jericho too. So she was kidnapped by two different yes! they just That is crazy. Chris that Jericho Chris Jericho convinced her to marry him while he had amnesia. Because the reason he won is uh, Triple H one is she, he, she got her memory back in the middle of the match and she pulled Triple H's leg onto the rope and Jericho was like, "What are you doing, bitch?" And the Triple H got up and pedigreed him. What about the whole uh, Hornswoggle is Vince McMahon's illegitimate son arc? Great arc, awesome arc. <laughs> oh, well, we thought that Raw's general manager was gonna be someone good and it was a fucking midget. That was hilarious, and the the whole the whole midget storyline was so hilarious to me. I love I love that era of WWE. What about uh, Vince McMahon versus Stephanie McMahon at a pay per view? To because Vince was cheating on his, her mom with Sable. <laughs> they <laughs> and did. She they beat did. her daughter's ass. It was like a, what was it like an Extreme Rules yes. match? It was like a ho- ho- um no ho- no no holds barred. And they were, he just he he went was, to town. He really beat his daughter's ass, and that's when he was roided Vince too. <laughs> I think I think. The WWE, especially now, has so. I am very surprised <laughs> how they have turned, how they've completely did a 360 with their female wrestlers and they're just their female talent, period. Well, they're just investing in their storylines at this point, and that's a good thing. Oh, well, yeah. They were doing some sus shit with the wrestlers not even five, six years ago. Remember there was the a Divas pimp. era? There was a pimp, and he had a whole train. This is like the 90s. <laughs> And he I know would, who you're talking I, about. Is it Big Daddy Kane? Yeah, it was I, the same dude who was it Big was the Daddy dude who played Kane? Papa Shango. Because yes. he went from the voodoo dude to a yes. pimp and he's in the Hall of Fame. And twice. he would go around to cities, to every city, and just get a line of women and would parade them around as they were a whole train. And he was like, all aboard the whole train, and all these and little all the, skinny white bitches would just, just follow this man going, out. Choo, choo. And they would do it like outside the stadium. Like they'd get security guards and shit. They were fans. And then they would just and then they would just they would just move all the way through the entire stadium around the ring. And he didn't I, I don't remember anyone he fought. Don't remember a single person. It doesn't he fought. matter who he fought, <laughs> and he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> when he loses, he wins. It, it's it don't uh, matter who was it. Do you remember Bo Dallas? 
uh, Bray Wyatt's brother. Yeah. yeah. The you got a bow leave. That nigga was he was like undefeated for a minute and he sounded like he was special. And, <laughs> and he'd be like, I'm 20 in bow. And like JBL, JBL had like the biggest boner for him. And he was yes. like, he was like, all you gotta do is bow leave. Michael, fuck you. I love Bo Dallas. Oh my god. Oh, I was like, that's another thing. JBL I don't give such a I piece do of not shit. care. That he was another have, racially charged character. I, <laughs> Because he, he had that whole beef with fucking with, Booker T. And with John Cena, he told John Cena to stop participating in coon tunes. <laughs> when John Cena was rapping. Kind of talking about wrestlers rapping. Yeah. Has has anyone here heard of the 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 on um, the, the rock, rock rap it's song? It's terrible. It's that so is, cringy. That shit is, I, it wasn't if as I bad played as football, I I'd be eating to that shit. That'd be in my headphones during warm-up. It wasn't as bad as I thought. John Listen, Cena is a much better rapper than The Rock. Word life. Mark Wahlberg is a better rapper than John Cena. What? Uh, what? Yeah, like, I, hey, I get it. A sample Marky size. Mark, Marky, Mark in, Marky, Marky Bunch? Mark in the Funky Bunch. Come on. I was listening to Marky Mark in the Funky Bunch at work. And I was like, That's wow. This is why your coworkers don't like you. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about those niggas. Fuck those niggas. Well, not all of them. Some of them are cool. But like the ones I don't like, fuck them. Name drop them. Okay, don't do that. No, don't, don't name drop. Look at his face. He That's like, crazy as fuck. I, I said, and this is their address. <laughs> and he started gripping the samurai and one, sword. And then this one touches little girls, and we're just gonna. Okay. Whoa! Allegedly, <laughs> it's a joke. Comedy style. <laughs> Wilding out has gotten worse. Obviously, yeah, I, yeah, I could have told you that. Nick Cannon Nick is Cannon, the cringiest Nick man Cannon, alive. Nick Cannon called someone a kike, and then it just went downhill. Listen, the fact that Nick Cannon is still in Wild and Out is Nick Cannon should be in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, Stop it. Why? Support your claim. Uh, the same. Okay, you know what? I can't put it into words, but I can do it in a way that Tyler will understand. For the same way you put Master P at number that's seven. That's not the same. It is the that's same. That's not the same. It's for what he's he not did breaking, for the game. He's not broken, broken what did any he do talent. For the game? And he has not done anything he's for the culture. Nick can't, the, what did what Nick Cannon do? Nick Cannon do? Nothing what nothing has he done for the culture? He's made like bad little, music. He's like he's little, made bad music. No, he's like Lil Bow Wow, but people don't hate him. People love Bow Wow. No, they don't. Who hates Lil Bow Wow? Everyone hates Bow Wow. That's not true. Bow Wow is the most shitted on rapper of all time. That is not. That is cap. That is cap. Niggas love Bow Wow. No, they don't, bro. Yes, they do. They don't love Bow Wow, but he's not the most shitted on He gets shitted on. He gets shitted on to be one of the most famous. You know what my most recognized- Bow Wow is one of the most- Boy? Soldier Boy deserves to be shitted on, though. But you're talking about a famous rapper, someone- but Soulja Boy does things to get shitted on. Like, he talks the shit and is an asshole to be shitted on to stay relevant. Bow Wow is like, yeah, guys, I'm making a new movie. And they're like, fuck you, nigga. Who are you? Like, what do you do? I, I He's disagree. in Tyler Perry movies. Uh, I swear nah. Bow Wow gets pooped on. I don't think, I don't Listen, think Bow Wow. My dad doesn't like Bow Wow. If you I shit on Like Mike, fuck you. don't like Bow Wow. Like Maybe. Mike is a great movie. That's Little Romeo. Oh no, that is Bob. I say if you would have said like, Little no, Romeo, no, if you said Little Romeo, no. I would agree with you. Little Romeo isn't hated on. He doesn't do anything. He's just Master P's son. But Master, <laughs> but you cannot. I, Wait, I is Bow Wow or Romeo the one in Like Mike? Bow Wow. Bow Wow. Is Bow Wow? Yeah. This nigga don't even know who the fuck he's talking about. This fucking no, I know, idiot. I know old Bow Wow, but they're like, or I know new Bow Wow because he was in Lottery you. Ticket and shit. Yeah, yeah, nigga. I just, I'm sorry. I don't know the difference between the two little light skin fucks that look alike. Like, they both had braids. It was the 2000s. They all look the same. They look no. like AI. Bow Wow, Bow Wow had the had the full, uh, you know. Uh, so you're Allen Iverson you, look. What are you, the corn, the cornrow connoisseur now? <laughs> 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 That's because I watched like Mike like a thousand times. So Mark wanted to be the white kid. In the Mark, movie. we should, we should get Mark from cornrows. Mark no, and Phil, y'all should invest in cornrows. No. I, I would pay good bad. money to see this. Phil should get dreads. No. I'll get cornrows before I get dreads, on, but I'm wook. not trying to get either. You don't be a wook? No. <laughs> no, I don't. All right. All right. All right. All right. So. Tyler, you should get waves. Um, no. Can we all? Hold Tyler on. Tyler and the Jerry Crow. Okay, wait, wait, We've wait. been talking about it. I need it. It's not going to be a Jerry Crow. It'll be an S Crow. Okay. Okay, so wait. We're all going to have to do really fucked up things to our hairs then. You got to get not cornrows. Doing. Xavier, I want you to go bald. That's funny. I, I'll go bald. He went bald before, didn't he? Not bald. No, he means like Ronnie Hogan. Like oh, razor. shaved. I'll Straight do it. Razor. I'll get a mullet. I'll do it. Don't get a mullet. No, I'll we. Stop being I would hurt you. 
I would physically hurt you. If oh, you got but a you mullet. you wouldn't do nothing over Phil with dread. That's t- no. that's so much worse. No, it's not. No, I agree mullet, with Phil. I'd mullet rather Phil, mullet Phil is disgusting. I would though. rather be associated with dreads, the person who has a mullet than a white person with dreads. Disgusting. All I'm saying is the dreads would fit the photo you took last night. No, it wouldn't. I'd clown myself by dreads in the photo. <laughs> Mark, if you got a mullet, you look like your dad. What? Yeah, my dad had a mullet in the nineties. Gross. <laughs> so nasty. It's so and the largest Listen, picture of my so dad. Nasty. The largest picture of my dad in the eighties and the nineties. It's a red background with his with his thick ass mustache. And the grossest mullet I've ever seen. Tony, I know you listen to and this that sometimes. that shit was greased up. Just know. I can tell, through the, I can you, tell through the picture. You could see That's, the shine. He put, he, put the, he put the gel in that he bitch. Put that he, was, hey. he put that VO4. He put that VO4 in his hair. <laughs> Tony, you thought you did something with that one, didn't you? Listen, I love you, big man, but don't ever. Don't ever let me see that photo. <laughs> nah, Dad, don't listen to them. Bring back the mullet. Ooh, no. bring don't back bring back the, the mullet. Your mom would have a heart attack. She I don't would, think so. She would leave that nigga. No, she liked the mullet. She liked them. She definitely liked the mullet. Nora Nora be like, I can't. I really can't associate with you niggas now. <laughs> she like, she, yeah, already, she does that anyway. <laughs> she, she, hey, let's, she go turn it up to 12. She'd be like, yeah. I'm moving out. She she legit be like, yeah, no. I think it's I think it's time. My sister's never moving out. I'm That's convinced. cap. Let your dad get a fucking mullet. I'd rather be associated with a white person with a mullet than a white person with dreads. Because you're racist. That is cap. That, I, I'd rather that, talk to someone with a fucking... Mark doesn't want to associate with anyone with dreads. dreads. Yeah, there's layers what, to that, what are you Mark? talking Mark is about? just scared of dreadheads. I'm That's not all scared of dreads. I like people who have dreads. Name one dreadhead. We had Carter on the podcast. I fuck with and Carter. you sat furthest away from him. No, I sat right <laughs> next to him. I literally sat right next to him. I saw you were scared the whole time. I'm about to no. say, to anyone out here listening, don't get a mullet. mullet mullets are terrible. Don't get mullet. Um, and if you're white, definitely don't get dreads. Ohio. And if you're black, don't get the Cat Williams. I hate black people with straight hair. <laughs> can we talk about start, unless wait, it's a woman. Can we talk about black Cat Williams? Women with straight hair is okay. But if you're a black dude and you have the Cat Williams, I'm probably going to hit you. Why? I think Cat Williams look great. Can we talk about the Cat Williams? The only time that I've liked a straight hair on a black dude was when Ron G came dressed as Pootie Tang that was to great. the Halloween party. What are you going to say about Cat Williams? The fact that he made his whole career becoming a pimp in the movies. That, that's not his entire career. And he has, first, stand-up. Half he has amazing stand The first half of it. He has amazing stand The first half of his career is his stand up. Could you imagine? I want, if I wanted a career in my life, it would be Cat Williams. Because all no, he does you is. You can do better. <laughs> all he does is say bitches and hoes in every single movie and that he is. So you in, just want to be misogynistic and get paid for it? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Where is HR? When <laughs> wait till, HR's not here. Wait till HR. Here. Here's this. HR's not here. <laughs> well, we're going to text him about it. Now. Mark wants to be a massage and Nixon can get paid. And we told him no. And Mark he hey, yelled at us. According to Tom Hollywood, if it's in the movie, it's him. acceptable. So you don't worry about it. Time out. Hold on. What did you say? I said Tyler just wants the heat off him from the last few weeks. <laughs> hey, fuck <laughs> no, 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 no. you. Tyler hasn't done shit in the last few weeks. I've been what did great. You, what are you talking about? Tyler, I haven't done anything. Tyler, do we need putting to Molly in champagne? Do we need to bring There's up? nothing wrong with putting Molly in champagne. Ooh. Maybe if you're drinking, you know, hey, if you're I, drinking I the champagne, but like drinking the champagne, they're But she ain't even know it. And that's the point we're trying to You know, you can put Molly in champagne, Tyler, because that's just insinuating that you're doing molly but if you put molly in phil champagne if you, if you share it with and he, he ain't even he know, ain't it. know it exactly. and, <laughs> and he wakes up with a sore thing. bum that's one thing you're already going to jail for that but then if you take that home and you enjoyed that he ain't even know it tyler <laughs> they throw in the book of <laughs> <laughs> listen if he didn't know it that means tyler's got a tiny penis uh, listen no no, no, maybe doesn't. he was just unconscious for me. <laughs> maybe he just really ain't know it <laughs> i don't know he was very not aware Oh, listen, that's crazy. Or maybe he gave him some whippets before he passed out. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. What, what the fuck is a whippet? Wait, no, without a whippet. What's the what's the gay dude drug that they take to make their booty stretch? Oh, poppers? Yeah, poppers. Why do they call them poppers? Damn. Why do they call any drug any nickname right. for a drug? <laughs> Why is I it called like, heroin? I feel like the police come up with street names for drugs. I don't even know if I would like call poppers a street drug. No, street names. What the fuck is a popper? Um, I think it's amyl nitrate, but it's like a fluid, and you uh, inhale it, and then it like it makes your body really loose and makes your butthole stretch easier for anal sex. I feel like it'd be great for like a diarrhea or something like that. When you gotta (laughs) like take a look, you gotta take. We're gonna buy Tyler some poppers. (laughs) Can you 
imagine it. He Tyler, like, just take some X-Lax, bro. He went back to school, and he's like, the college, like, studying, like, being a doctor, and he's like, we should use poppers for people with diarrhea for when they have to take big poops. <laughs> yeah, how easy that would be, just like. Just Tyler, just take some ice wax. Don't take. Don't you take, could just soften, soften your stool instead. Don't take bussy drugs, Tyler. To bussy drugs. Hey, <laughs> don't take bussy drugs. <laughs> you leave bussy drugs alone. <laughs> what the fuck? Is There's bussy drugs. So Halloween's coming up. You guys have any plans? What's coming? What's going on for the weekend? You're not trying to go to a Halloween party. Um, um, I'm going to a Halloween party actually. Uh, they all, y'all are what invited. What day are you going? What day? The thirtieth. Yeah. Oh, so oh. whose house is it? Uh, Saturday night. We should all pop up at the same spot on Halloween night before we, Halloween. We, can try, to we can try to go to multiple spots. If we go to their house and it's like it's not like bussing, bussing, like yeah, no, but we could invite everyone there, including them, to come to like I have like a banger that's going on at, like a warehouse. Yeah, but it's, Tyler, what's what's your costume? Are you still I'm rocking the cowboy? Still, still, still rocking the cowboy shit. shit. Yeah, we 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 got it. We outside. Sheriff yo. Are you gonna go buy a cowboy hat, or am I gonna have to share with you again? Um, I'm probably I'm probably contact a friend and I will see if he can let me borrow his cowboy hat. And then I'm trying to go get some pistols. No, and whoa, I want to find whoa. Mark. I'm trying to find some spurs. Where can I find spurs at? Because um, listen, let me tell you. You can put spurs. Hey, on let's see. Ashtabula County. Hey, let, let, let me tell you. You could go rob someone in Ashtabula. They probably have spurs. You can uh, get them off the internet. Listen, I put some spurs on them bitches. Get some, and, get some. I get some. Amazon. I get some real. I start chewing tobacco go, for this. I'm about to go get some some water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first I off, first off, if you dip, you. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. Second off, I'm gonna grab water. Listen, listen. Tell me, if I started chewing tobacco, how would y'all feel? I'd bully the fuck You'd out be of you. Disgusting. But you smoke. But you guys hit jewel. jewel I don't fix. do any of that. Okay, yeah, and that's one bad thing, but dipping is a whole different level of trash. Listen, would you rather have lung cancer or mouth cancer? Pick one. But I'm not... I can't I, look at my lungs. That's true. But, time, hold on, real quick. Also, I'm you'd not be gonna, spitting in a bottle at all times. That's nasty. Now, nah, I think I'm bringing a pot. I'm going to set a pot in the You're corner. Have a He's whole, going like, I'm going to have a whole, a whole mud spit. jug. I'm going to have a whole spit. This a little He's spit like, thing. Ding, ding, Listen, ding. I thought that was the cool. Whenever I watch fucking Looney Tunes, that was the coolest shit Wait, ever. So that, why why does it solidify? Why is it so hard when it comes out of your mouth? That's crazy. What? I, do you know? Do you guys know why? Like, how is? Because it's chew, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how come when you spit it into a piece I of think steel, it, just it goes for, pating? I, it's a cartoon, Mark. I was say. I think it's that's a just a cartoon. cartoon. No, but they can do the shit in real life too. Not to make it the ting. <laughs> I actually never no. heard. No, yeah, I've it's, never heard no, because that. it's 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 aluminum. That's why it's an aluminum spit can, and then it's a loogie. But it's like the hard, like you know, like when you have like the nasty hard oh, thick spit in your mouth, like the dark green shit. Yeah, and then like, Ugh. and the reason they have that is from tobacco, like smoking unfiltered cigarettes and chewing. Also, you know how you know how the nicotine gets in your mouth and chew, right? There's fiberglass in it. It cuts your gums up. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. That's why, like, that's why people like, for they, the, do, they do this and they don't have this part of their gums. They just have like teeth and then this part. And you, yeah, they gum it. That's, yeah, because it like it cuts and rips away their skin. Yeah, that's how doing, nicotine products I'm, work in general. I'm a method actor. I'm all in. You're not you're acting. A dumbass. You're, just, that's what you are. you're an addict. <laughs> Look at Jim Carrey and then tell me if you want to be a method actor ever again. Jim Carrey. Jim is Carrey's a, method a great actor. actor. <laughs> Jim Carrey's a great actor. Hey, I knew him when he was James Carrey. <laughs> Shout out in Living Color. That was a great show. I hate you. Okay. Okay. Not mad. Not mad. That was the first time I ever saw his name was James. My dad was like, yeah, what you know about this boy? And I was like, nothing. Nigga, I wasn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate when people ask me, like, what yeah. you know about this? And I don't know a lot because, you know, I wasn't conceived yet. I was not I was, I was barely a sperm in my was, dad's ball sack. I was sack, kicking like, in the balls, but I was, playing, <laughs> I was playing pool with my unborn brothers. Nigga, like, I don't hey, know. Who, what you mean what I know? I don't know a lot, but, you know, I know a little. I know it existed. That's about it. I'm just, that's, that's all I'm saying. So Halloween. So what, what, you're, you're you're still Jesus. Yeah. Think about it. What about what about um, our parents? Like, uh, as, uh, old people in when they were teenagers, they were like, "What do you know about this bubblegum love song, huh?" Bubblegum. Like love nothing, song. Grandma. No one's listened to this. Since <laughs> what do you know? What nickel? do you know about the? What the <laughs> fuck is that? I don't know. Hey, I'm, not made that fake. I'm not made that song. fake. Mark told me he was going to smoke one time in the car, and I let him before we came in here. That's no. why he's acting like this. No. No. 
this is just how I am. If Mark was off his ass right now, I would laugh. I would laugh, and then I would just I couldn't I couldn't go. I couldn't continue. Could not continue. Wouldn't know how to continue. Tyler would die Can right there. Can we do there. one of these podcasts on drugs? Sure. No, I'm, I'm not. Can we take shrooms drugs. and do it? We're, we won't tell them that we're doing shrooms, and you don't have to. Don't say yes or no because oh then they'll God. know that you're saying it. But shake your head, and I'll know. I'm nodding my head. No. Sheesh. So is everybody else in the room? Sheesh. Mark, you're making it suspicious. Let them choose for themselves. <laughs> I don't know. It's a fun idea. I'll, I'll, I'll say that as my only comment. Mark, you just said we didn't have fans. Why does it matter if we're talking about doing <laughs> drugs or not? Uh, I guess you got a I'm, point. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think that it would be a very interesting thing to um to think about. But I don't know if you want to do shrooms. I think... Okay, wait. Then you'll do meth. I'll do heroin. He'll do. We can do a live episode, like an crack. Instagram live or some shit. Let's all just. Smoke or wait, crack. do you want crack? Mm-hmm. I'm not smoking no crack. Oh, you want that meth? I don't. I not get doing it, bro. That either. Okay, you can get meth. You can get crack. I'll take that heroin, and we'll just give Mark bath salts. No, he doesn't get to. Choose. You got to do some sort of upper too. You can't be the only one on downers. He doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know the difference between these drugs, Phil? Take some ecstasy. I took a dare class. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, think take some ecstasy. Want to do drugs? Bitch. I have a question. I didn't. What's your question? How do you guys? Re- how did you guys personally respond to the dare class? Nigga, I, I was failed so that bitch. I, I didn't know drugs. You like, failed dare. I didn't know yes, really what I drugs failed were. Dare. I didn't care what they had to say. You know when I stopped paying attention to dare? When they walked up to us with a mouse trap. It was a mouse trap that was all padded up. And she the, the we had a, a deputy, she was a sheriff. And she was like, put your finger in here. And she did it to everyone in the classroom. And the only person who didn't do it was like a girl who didn't understand English. Right? I went to Harvey. There were people who didn't speak English sometimes. Like I went to the, the Painsville school system. Yeah. And that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. My problem was that this girl got an award for not doing it. Like they were like, see? This is what happens when people tell you, you should just try drugs or alcohol. It won't hurt. And then I was sitting there like, bitch, I know it wasn't going to hurt. It, it's a mouse trap with padding. You'd get in trouble if you hurt me. Like, we're in a school. And she was like, it's, that's not the point. And I was like, this is a dumbass lesson. And then she kicked me out. And that's why I, I failed there. I think drug education just educated kids on what drugs to take. That's exactly what it did to me, Mark. <laughs> I, I looked at the pamphlet and it had like, it was like a whole infographic about different types of common street drugs what they did and then like the harmful effects that it had on your body and i i read through it in awe i didn't really want to try drugs before then but i read through that list and i was like this sounds really cool see phil you could thank ronald reagan for something no no i can't (laughs) (laughs) i can't do that i know wow (laughs) he honed your taste in drugs I would have figured it out eventually. <laughs> I'm with, not giving Ronnie with credit. It without, with it without, Rod, without Reagan. Um, I, honestly, I don't remember a dare class. I think the closest thing I had to a dare class was my senior year in high school. I'm not going to fuck with Wait, you. Wait, what? Um, senior year in high school, it was like... um. It was something, it was like some, it was like some extra class I took or some bullshit like that. Health? Um, not, it was Oh, it was health. the senior, like, leadership class or some yeah, shit? Yeah, it was senior leadership. <laughs> and they had, like, a drug thing. They had a deputy come in, all this other shit. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, wow, a drug class. And we're seniors in high school. After this, and I, I looked know around, who was in that and class. And I just you. looked, and that's the crazy thing. I looked around, I almost said, I know they do drugs. That person does drugs. Oh, sh- her slash he Really be doing drugs like like they are. I need addicts. to know that. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and let me tell you, I just sat around that class. I'm like, wow, that is crazy. Did they play really, stupid or did I they don't put it on the stone? I to have to bleep shit out, but I really want to know who was in this class. Philo, I'm no, sorry, you gotta bleep it. it out. No text. Yeah, yeah, just text just, just talk post podcast. Yeah, hey, post listen, I want to know now. Gonna, text oh, me. No, 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 I, no, I'm not gonna hold you. It was the funniest thing on the planet. Um, I think. I feel like that's something that's something I really kind of go back and I think about is wait there was a drug portion on Kairos. Yeah. If you did Kairos right it was fucking great. No no no, no. like there was I'm a whole kidding. like did, anti-drug did you do, did you portion. Did drugs or alcohol on Kairos? Um no. Oh. I there was kids that did but I was not one of them. I you know what upsets me about Kairos? What? Is that for like 
two years, I texted Stove every day on Facebook on some like, so like, what was the Kairos message? It's not fair. I didn't get to go. And then he eventually told me, he was like, the message is the I was like, so you, you, you make these kids who bullied each other for four years and like gave each other the worst panic attacks ever and you stick them into a room together and they trauma dump for three hours and cry and make some of the kids feel bad for them and then they're supposed to be friends after high school? There wasn't even any yeah. trauma dumping when I went. Oh, there was no, a there lot. Was there was trauma dumping. It might not have been you, but our class, I remember because someone told me some of the shit that they were saying about what they did to people and how they felt bad about it. See, the problem is the I people saying, I went with didn't really feel bad about what they did. That's true. I, <laughs> I, I, know, I know who was in your thing. So, uh, I know who was in your thing. I can't relate. Shit. I supposed I to feel bad? But like, fuck these that's niggas. crazy. Cause I don't like, fuck with them. The niggas didn't even... It, that's what I'm saying. It was sob story trauma dumping. It was like, I'm sorry I did this. <laughs> I'm so sad. And then they just... They continued to do shit like that in college. And then my problem is, is that... Everybody was kind of expected to like support them through admitting the something bullshit. that they did uh, terribly. Oh, so you were you were a real piece of shit. I thought I thought I was crazy and you were a piece exactly. of shit. Like I but thought no, I was assuming. you're an actual piece of shit. Like you're actual garbage. And now I'm supposed to just be like, it's okay, brother. No, Dude, <laughs> I don't. And, I don't. And at the end, said, hey, hey, listen, we're all white men here. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, the, there's like a whole, like on the last day, like the last night, there's a whole portion where it's like an open stand and anybody can go up and say whatever they want. The f- and, I, <laughs> and I, so there was a whole line of people that went up trauma dumped and cried. And then I went up there and I'm like, you know, I really thought you guys were assholes. And you are assholes. And then I hey. sat back down. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> because the night before, they... So the leaders got all the guys without the the teachers knowing. And we went into the other side of the building. So they didn't know where we were. And then they decided they to knew. make... They knew. No, they knew, Mark. They this, knew. Is a, this is all a ploy. Yeah. For but do you know what, do you know what happened stupid? the whole time? They decided to think it was a good idea. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna make a we're gonna make a list of the hottest females at school and talk shit about every single ugly girl at school. They said, "Let's get some real middle school shit." Cooking <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just sitting in there, and I'm like, "I have a girlfriend." Is this me? what we're doing? Like, everybody Mark, is like eight, seventeen, eighteen years old. You're about to be we're, adults. We're acting, we're Mark, acting like fucking is, thirteen year olds in this bitch. Mark, who is the hottest girl on the list? I don't even remember. You did you got write down a list or was it no? Just it was like, all it was all verbal. Man, bullshit. That's lame. Somebody as fuck. wrote it down. It's it's somewhere. They didn't but, even do it right. Man, gotta, I would have. I would have. I would have been like, I got you. I got the pen and paper right no, here. No, no, we can't we, talk we, shit though because what, what was the day we all went to Mark's house and we made the same yeah, damn list. straight, <laughs> damn straight. Hey, we had a yearbook too. We were looking through that bitch. Did, like, yeah, did not. <laughs> You definitely Reg- participated. We got it a little bit, but I didn't regret <laughs> waking up that that lady in my neighborhood. If you're listening, fuck you, you're Oh, bitch. the lady across the street who was shut the fuck up. And yeah, Tyler was like, shut up, bitch. I'll beat you. <laughs> we were just huddled around a, we were just huddled around a fire talking shit like we usually do. Well, you were there, and she comes you? out on her back porch and she's like, Shut up, I'm trying to sleep. Fuck you guys. And then Tyler said his shit, and I was like, No, 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 I, I got this, Tyler. And I was like, take your dumb ass back into your house, into your bed where your husband hates you, and go to sleep. That's and then crazy, after Mark was waiting then, for someone to encroach on his property so he could exactly. really use that new gun he just got. And then after <laughs> okay. after that, you know where I tossed all the dog shit? In her backyard. You're such a piece of shit. That's hey. terrible. Yeah. Okay. I'm a so, piece of shit, but you know what? Her, so her backyard is a piece of shit. So Phil. Your yeah. Cairo trip. What happened? Tell, uh, explain to us. Okay, because you're a year younger than us. Oh, my Cairo trip was great, and we did have a lot of. Did you of go Googling. twice? Were you one of the people that went twice? I only went once. I tried okay. to go twice, and oh, then you they were, were going like, to go hey, with our seniors, nah. so you could have went with us or like them. Yeah, like um, it was interesting. I had a really diverse group of people. Like I only knew like two of the people that was in my group, and they were in my grade, and then. It was like the Breakfast Club. Like we were all just kind of weird. That's a great movie. We were That's fitting a, into different social oh, real, real niches. Quick, real quick. Yeah, I, I just want to say anyone out there that is listening right now, the Breakfast Club is the best movie from the eighties. 
there is no comparison. You're wrong. The best movie from the '80s is The Breakfast Club. No, but yes. it's good. It's up there. But it, it's not it is, it's, okay. It's, all right, shut up. Let Phil go, go finish. Um, Let Phil finish. It was really cathartic because my group kind of <laughs> was just like, "All right, fuck it. We're just gonna talk about our feelings," and it was actually kind of cool. But like, there was a lot of weird shit that happened on my Kairos trip. Like, um, as as Mark was saying earlier, there's the section towards the end of the entire trip where it's kind of like a an open communication thing where anybody can walk up to the podium and say whatever they want. And this one kid, I'm not going to say any names, but he was talking about um, he was fighting with his mom and his mom was going to kick him out and not pay for his college. And he's crying and he's going on and on. And everyone is like really enthralled in this story. And somebody way in the back just goes, hey, yo, that's fucked. Up. And I started laughing so fucking hard, just like in the middle of this really somber moment. Some assholes just yelling in the background. Phil, how much sus moments happened when you were on Kairos? A, a million. Oh my god! It I walked. Great. I walked in the downstairs section. There's two levels of dorms, and we no, all had to were go. Is that a college? No, it was like no. a, a a sanctuary. It's for, like a monastery. A monastery. Oh, so it's like where the people learning to be priests sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but half of it was like um. Uh, I thought y'all were out in the woods or something. It was Wait, it was specifically made for. I did not go. Why? Because I didn't care. <laughs> I, didn't I mean, it was on and shit. it was on tons of land. It was beautiful. There was a huge back section, but mm-hmm. most of it was like half of it was resort, half of it was a monastery for priests. So I'm in the basement section, and they were like, "Okay, go find your group," because we all had a group. And I walk downstairs, and I see these dudes butt ass naked. Running through this like one person wide hallway, trying to <laughs> chase somebody down, like four naked dudes <laughs> running after another <laughs> naked dude. And they tackled him to the ground and started humping each other. There's always some really weird what? shit that happens on Cairo. And then what? once they once they made the dog pile of of naked dudes, and listen, listen, all these guys are straight. I know for a fact Breathe. all these guys were straight. <laughs> they made a dog pile, started humping the dude on the bottom, and then five more dudes pulled their towels off and started whipping the dudes that were humping the guy on the ground. Ram Ranch. <laughs> I'm so that was the most such shit. I was so happy that was the most such shit I ever seen. That in my is life. the what? Is that what we're doing? This I know it to be about God and, and religion. I don't, and, I don't and understand. Y'all, y'all are. And I don't understand why a, a pile of dudes get together in a small area and a bunch of sus shit happens. Never it's mind, fun. Tyler, but, I'm sorry I asked you. But why damn. you didn't go? But damn. Wait, did I you, mean, did you have the tickle pickle match happen in your Kairos? Um, not around me. I, I missed that part. <laughs> but um, there, every year there's some weird story that goes around. Like the year after me, some kid shit in a sock and they threw it like oh, onto the big nasty. tree that overlooked the front yard. Of the property. You guys are fucking here. What is wrong with that school? <laughs> Dude, and the food, the food that they serve. Garbage? Garbage. Yeah. So every morning, it was the same. You know what a quiche is? Yeah. It was prune quiche every morning. Oh, we had better food than that. <laughs> every single morning. So what I did was I got a bowl of mac and cheese, like the, the Velveeta or the craft shit, because that was the on the snack table, there was this big snack table, and I had that for like for the whole time because there was no you didn't food put your that I was willing in the mac and cheese. No, Why would I, buff up I don't want to eat Mark. prunes. Hey, I don't want to shit my brains out. Hey, this man, no, Mark. Thank you. This man was like, "I'm just, I'm just gonna eat cheese, cheese. I'm gonna be constipated, but fuck it, I'm gonna eat cheese." I'd rather be constipated than than keep shitting all day long. Maybe that's why that kid threw the sock. It was to make a statement. Like, stop <laughs> yeah. giving me prunes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not gonna lie. I have not gone to Kairos, but I have gone to like a very religious retreat. I was like, I want to say probably like how supervised eight or nine. was it? Um, I was there with my auntie. Oh, it was very super supervised, and we went like this. It was Alabama. It was like this nice little like wooded thing, and like that, like a lake, like a little lake or something like that. So it was an actual like community thing. Yeah, but it was very religious, and I had the worst time of my life. Because, like, I'm not really big into religion or anything like that. And I'm just like, wow. And then all we ate that entire weekend was veggie burgers. 
And I was sick. I was sick to my That's stomach. That's nasty. I was sick to my stomach. I'm like, wow, I hate everyone here right now. What kind of veggie burger do you think it was? Was it like I that? don't care. It was not a meat. bad one. <laughs> it, it wasn't, wasn't it wasn't quinoa. Quinoa wasn't wasn't good then. What's, People didn't know about that? it. It's probably exactly. soy burgers. You know what quinoa is? Quinoa. You don't you work in a vegan quinoa. part of the restaurant? <laughs> Quinoa. Well, because I had to spell it how it's like. No, you I had know, to say how it's spelled. You know I know how to say me? quinoa. Like, you know, I just said it the first time. You know that insurance Xavier, commercial where Xavier's it's like, don't type become your guy, parents? You gave the type of guy to go to Burger King and get that impossible Whopper. And they think Not from Burger something. King. Not from Burger King. But when I worked at Burger Fi, I would get the impossible burgers because they were good. That's nasty. They're worse for you than the regular beef. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not, Mark. Yeah, because the preservatives Mark, and no, the additives just, that Mark, they put in there. No, seriously. Mark. Mark's just not immune to propaganda. He's not. I mean, I would never put half of that shit that's in my body. Or put it in my body. Mark, you eat, I would never put Mark, it in my do body. You eat store-bought meat? It's the same shit. I eat organic shit, though. That's no, you, healthier. No, than no, you don't. Mark you buy kills it from his a, own animals. Hey, you buy it from his a own store. Gun. Yeah, but I eat the organic shit. I think that would be great. I think I would love to do that. I like If I could go hunting and kill an animal. You want to move to Alaska with me? I wouldn't mind. Fuck it. I'll go to Alaska. Mark, you you down? Pod, we could become the Alaskan Boys podcast. No, we need to stick with the Ohio. The fuck Ohio? What's here? Right. Me, nigga. Not yet. N- not, not when we take you to when Alaska. We take you to Alaska, nigga. I'm gonna buy oh, you a, a Carhartt hoodie and a rifle. It's gonna take you two months to upload the podcast. That's okay. Nigga, um, we don't during, have fans. Remember during your um during your during your little stint with Kairos, did you? What did you say? Like, what were some of the confections that you made in front of your? Your peers. Damn, Tyler. Okay, yeah, this no, is a he, loaded he, question. He literally walked up and said, if I got to tell it, then I got to tell it all. These are my confessions. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, nah, I mean, a lot of the people in my group, we mainly just talked about, like, our family problems. Uh, more, more so. How did that you wanna, go? Oh. It went, like, really well, honestly. Like, I was really surprised at how well my group kind of meshed. And that we had that whole breakfast club, like at the end of the movie, where they're like, "So we're just gonna we're gonna be cool in the hallways after this, right? Because this is a bonding experience." And then none of us ever talk to each other oh, again. Oh, that is the worst part. It was is great. You 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 dump all this trauma on these people, and then they just go back to the way it was. People don't care about you, and now they just know your business. Yeah, and, the, <laughs> yeah. and then they respect you even less because you told them all this information about your life. Hey, and hey. then they're because even you know more the same shit about them. Hey, so no, they I'm gonna say. Anything. Hey, no cap. I I know that you've done some very fucked up things to uh, to old girls. So it's like we all go be quiet here, and or or <laughs> if we really go start spilling shit. Like you I know, was no cap. I feel like the reason that I wouldn't have done well on Kairos is because like I would have said something and someone would have laughed, and I'd be like, nigga, I know what you did that you're not saying. Like shut your ass up. I will beat the fuck out of you in this monastery. I think the only, the, only, only, the, the only redeeming factor for me was since I was in a people very actually, shitty environment. People actually admitted people, the the bullshit that they actually no, did. not even that. It's it's the um the speakers that came in. Oh, the speakers were great. The speakers were great, and and you know what? Just, well, can we talk about the other was, speakers you guys had next? It was it was you mostly know what I'm talking about. Okay. it was mostly people <laughs> teaching people who don't know how to cope, which is a bunch of you know, teenage guys, how to cope with things. And I think that was a constructed thing that kind of stuck with me and affects me to this day. Justin Fatika. Yeah. Uh, can we, can we, can we cover Justin that? Fatika needs his own episode. Justin Fatika, we're allowed to name drop him because he's a known speaker. Yeah, he's a public figure. So we he are allowed to criticize him. He runs a cult. Talk shit about Justin Fatigue right now. This is my favorite thing that's I'm ever not happened. Gonna like, I, was you. Like, I, was I do not, not remember shit I, from right. that. I do not remember shit from that day. I remember going to the school that day and thinking, oh, it's about to be a normal day. And then they just shut that shit down. I'm like, what happened? You know what I remember? He took advantage of my girlfriend and made her cry in front of the whole school. I remember Wait, that. Wait, what? Okay, I remember go, that. Go from, I don't remember go from that. beginning to end. From beginning to end. I have a question. I have a question before we get into it. All right. What caused that? I Something happened. Happened that caused that entire thing to happen. That the, the thing that caused the the, the, head the of thing that caused to, Justin Fatika to come I don't to the know. School. I'm not. I didn't I know there was something know, that happened. But, uh, there was two uh, things. Uh, that I happened. think they just wanted 
because there was a retreat. There was like an incumbent retreat that was really lame. Mm -hmm. And it was just people sitting in a room kind of yelling at the administration and it wasn't really productive. So I guess they kind of wanted to have a more fulfilling school wide retreat. And that was the intention. I just I don't I, I'm being I don't I may be off here, but I remember in my head that a series of events led up and then they were like, okay. We're just because I don't think this was not supposed to happen. This was like spur no, of the moment. No, it wasn't supposed to happen because I remember hearing about it from Harvey and Mark texted me was like, "This fucking dickhead is at our school." Like blah 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 because we were supposed to hang out. That it happened on like a Thursday or Friday because we yeah. were all supposed to hang out after we did something at your house. And it was like and it was like it was a Friday. I remember this like, vividly. It was like yes. middle of the school year, and that's why it was. It was so, co- it was towards the end. It was like it in was Cairo season. Yeah, it was. It was, it was in like Cairo third season. Quarter. Yeah, yeah. I was about like to say quarter. it was where it happened. It didn't. Make sense where to happen because you, you're trying to get everything wrapped up you for the, did it at the beginning of the year and it was so weird it was such a weird experience i'm pretty sure it was an ultimatum to something because something happened between a boy and a girl like i know that that was one of the things two things happened i one i think was a school someone threatened to shoot up the school or something that might have no, been no, no, the school no, no. that, that I was, was that was, a, that was a whole different event was that a different, okay. like, a kid didn't even threaten to shoot up the school but, okay no 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 so, but there was something with a girl that happened and something else that happened. Mm-hmm. And then the retreat Tyler was talking about, and then boom. And then I remember hearing that this fucking dickhead came to the school that I used to go to, and everyone laughed at him. And then he was just foul to some of the students. He was, was foul, foul to everybody. all the students. It was terrible. There was teachers and, that walked away. Like, it and was bad. The worst part of it is that he gives these, he gives people who have trauma, a false false sense of security and creating a Kairos type environment, which he just does to bolster his own fucking ego. And he, this is why I think he runs a cult because he claims to have the answer to all everybody's problems. Like he's a fucking prophet. And the, the fact that God. he did this to my girlfriend and I had to raise my hand for compl- something unrelated just to go comfort her because he made her just completely Wait, so break go, go down. Go from beginning to end. All what right. happened when okay. he got there? It was, a, it was like a big, like he addressed the whole school first, right? Okay, no. What had happened was they brought everybody into the gym. I yeah. remember the beginning vividly because I almost pissed myself laughing. Because they, they didn't tell us anything. They were just like, we're going to have a retreat, go in the gym by this time. <laughs> Wait, wait, so like you guys missed classes to do this? Yeah, yeah this was, it a, was whole a day. day. No was classes. an entire like, day. This is why it was so weird. Like first thing in the morning, like when first period would oh, start. Oh, y'all niggas boom. were in the gym from in the auto. No, hey, no, we, no, not we the bounced whole around time. from locations and there was a lot of shit. But we would all okay, like so come, give me the whole rundown. We for would the day. reconvene into the gym in sections. There was three different times where um, the the whole organization and the people that were there came and spoke to us, and they had like a whole group lesson. But as they were setting it up and they had the big kind of like projector screen hanging down and the the main dude who was running the show was behind the projector screen. So the crowd could not see him yet. And there was two probably mid 20s, you know, college age, like really bland looking white dudes. And they had little like like animal costume heads like they weren't wearing like a whole costume or a fursuit or whatever you want to call it. But they had animal heads on and they had furries. Not like furry suit helmets, but like like cheaper. Oh, okay. Like, like a shitty Halloween costume, and um, they had Nerf footballs, and they were you know d- just playing some music and trying to get the kids worked up, and they were throwing the Nerf footballs, and the one dude wearing the the like the teddy bear head, just whew, Brett Favre like just threw it. It was just awesome, and it hit this girl right in the face, and I was crying crying i almost fell down the bleachers because i was laughing so hard a few minutes later they uh the the lights kind of change a little bit and they're like are you ready and the whole crowd's like we don't know what we're ready for him but like let's get the show on the road so this dude i he's moving around and he's got so much energy it's like he 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 had snorted a, a comedically large pile of coke. Just the way he was moving, the energy it was rabid. The whole time he he acted like this too. Yes, it, it, that was consistent throughout the day. He you know sprints around. He's wearing like the you know like the the dad shoes, the white like New Balances. Like he had those on, and they were really shiny from what I remember. Like they were like fresh. And he ran around, and he started talking to the crowd, and he was like, blah blah blah. I'm Justin Fatika. This is my organization. Blah blah blah. 
we're here to solve your problems. And um, they gave us like this whole breakdown of how the day was going to go. And the beginning was pretty calm. It was mainly just to organize everything. So then they split us up by gender and they took all the boys into the chapel. Wait, that happened first? Yes. They split us up by gender first. I mean, they gave no, us a little talking he, to yeah, but and a little demonstration the... first. But the like the event that you're talking about where HR cried, that was the second time we were in the gym. Yeah, but he kind of gave us like a – we had like a little mass type. Yeah. It was like I, a prayer service in the beginning. And he was giving out his coked out energy. Just kind of rambling. It, ex- yeah. Just, just giving us the generic, you know, church – God. style sermon he was he was showing us kind of like his website and talking about his organization yeah trying to sell his t-shirts and his book and shit like that um there's footage of him letting students hit him with steel chairs um he didn't do this as part of the the event for our school yeah this was, his HBO it was, was on his website and stuff and you could just see him getting cracked like a wwe wrestler so anyways they had split us up by gender after like this whole Initial chapel thing. Oh, my God. And this is the juicy moment. Yeah. They took us to the chapel. And the dudes that were wearing, like, the costume helmets. um, They were, like, his his youth ministers. Yeah, basically. And they took us in and they started talking about, um, like, how they've treated women over the past years. And they were, like, talking about how, like, blah, blah, blah. I, I met this one girl and then I just only used her for sex. And it led me down the wrong path and, like left me empty inside and then the other dude would come up and he'd be like yeah sluts am i right and then just like he went on some horrible spiel about how he mistreated women and basically this trend continued throughout the rest of the day and they tried to gaslight everybody into dumping similar information yeah like they were trying to wheel kids into these stories of like yeah what else did you do to her well, they were like they were basically like yeah i like i did this so like you can relate right like give me details okay exactly. while <laughs> while while okay. administrators okay. like while teachers and staff and administrators are standing right next to us okay real quick real quick and this is why i was like trying to think of like what led up to this because they were they were there for specific targeted reasons and it was very much like they were trying to find something and is and everyone's like what are you trying to what are you trying to figure out because what the fuck are they what the fuck did they tell you that we did because no one knows what the fuck's going on right now Mm -hmm. we're all very fucking we came into school in the middle of third quarter and now we're getting interrogated by possum head people yeah by youth ministers yeah this mega church ass cult yes so all right, progressively as the day goes on, um, this trend continues, and they get more and more, like, kind of graphic with their stories and more outlandish. Especially Justin Fatika. Oh, my God, yeah, the main dude, his main stories guy. went into graphic detail, and all of it was horseshit. And okay, he allowed, I- in his scenario, he allowed the most horrible shit that could happen yes. to a young female. Okay. You going to tell it? I, I would love to. Hey, unless you oh, want yeah, to. go, shoot. So at one point, um, they're going on about these big spiels about mistreating women. And the main dude that was giving us these speeches and running the show, he goes, you know, I worked at a high school one time. He had a very, like, weird cadence with the way he spoke. Yeah, it was, like, was kind of like a— Really intense. Like a, 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 like a Baptist minister that's trying to be really spiritual, but, you know, but he's, he's a white guy and he's wearing a basketball jersey and preaching about Jesus at the same time. Yeah. And he goes, you know, and I was trying to tell these kids how to, you know, treat women right. <laughs> and so already the crowd is like kind of chuckling at him. And he's like, all right. So this group of students, they came over and they kept picking on this one girl. And eventually they lured her to a beach, right? Yeah, they were, they was like seniors. He, he They were senior girls. She was, she was a freshman. They went to Jersey. They went to Jersey Shore. <laughs> they did and go to Jersey Shore. They went to Jersey Shore. Shore and they kept telling Justin Fatika, we're going to get her. Yeah. We're going to get her, Justin. We're doing it. We're going to rape her. Yeah. What? Literally. Like he, said Literally. This, he said this out loud. So. They, they end up, you know, with this girl on oh. Jersey Shore, and they, you know, do some terrible things to this girl. And apparently, they had filmed it, and this is, you know, back in the day. So they, it, it was like on, on a, a camera with like a, like a VHS, with like a VHS or like a cassette, right? <laughs> and as the story he told us goes, the kid came in, like just like 
slammed it on the counter, looked him right in the eyes, and was like, hey, Justin, we got her. And then <laughs> walked away. <laughs> and then you know what he did? He put it in a drawer and did nothing. Yeah. He was he was like, I talked he to the like, students. He was like, I have evidence right. for a rape case. She's unconscious. And these she dudes, was drunk. She they, was, they purposely got her drunk and high to where she cannot fight them off. Yeah, they did her. They said a hundred, like a hundred, like fifty like, or like fifty guys dudes. or something. No, it was more than that. And then they just he took said hundred and fifty. No, definitely like, like not 50 more guys. than twenty. No, it was like ten dudes. I swear to God, it he was said, like ten. He no, said you're, in a you're ra- dick. He said no. This man said the, in a rageous number. The worst numbers. part is, I could like. The fact that, like, it's not outrageous that Tyler is saying this number because of how outrageous the story the whole scenario is. Dude, it's, it's bizarre. And, like, just the way he's telling us the story, he's so enthralled. I'm in so what mad he's I didn't go to Lake. Like, I'm so mad. This is honestly stay. my favorite experience I had going to high school. And, af- and the day after was. The day after was like, oh dude, my it was weird. It like, was Nirvana. It, it was so quiet. People were so teachers like, were mad. Lost. We had all experienced the same trauma as a school. I've never seen the school so tight knit and as one than the day after Justin Fatika. Because we all the whole day we're talking about it. And then at the end of the day, the whole school wrote an email to the gentleman who was in charge of this event. Yes. And then after the day, after that day, they sent us a Google form. Of our experience. Yes. And amidst talking to each other, so the guys are talking to the girls. Because I don't know why they mm-hmm. didn't think that the guys were going to talk to the girls about their experience. Wait, explain guys talking to the girls. So, so the, when they had to like, split up by genders. The, they, we, had different, we had different speakers. We had um, the guys mostly talked, the guy ministers, and then the girls came in. And I assume it was vice versa for the girls. Yes. Um, one of the best parts of this whole day was when the female guest speakers came to talk to the male students. And because I guess from what I had heard from other female students, they had said that basically the same stuff was happening to us, was happening to them, but on like the other side of the coin, you know, because whereas they were questioning us to like, what did you do to these women? They were like, so what did the boys do to you? You know, like, to like, you could tell us, you know, like, what did they do to you? So anyways... The the female guest speakers come into the library and like the way the library was kind of structured in the school, there was a big kind of open area in the middle of the library. Yeah, and everybody's sitting sitting on the perimeter and the speakers are in the middle kind of talking to the whole crowd. So the female speakers, they come in and they talk about getting just like just horrible shit happening to them while they were teenagers in high school and just like just, like movie script terrible. Not to say that it didn't happen, but they made it really hard for us to believe that it was actually true. Yeah. Because the whole time, it seemed like they just made up a bunch of stories to get us to react a certain way. Yeah, it seemed very disingenuous. They tried to... I wouldn't... I I, I gaslight is like the best word I could use to say. They really oh, yeah. tried to get a, get, a, get a reaction out of us through the stories that they were telling. Like, telling a bunch of... A group of guys who are, I want to say... Because it was mainly because our group was mainly seniors and juniors. So we're probably ages 18 to 16, 17, 18, 15 mm-hmm. at the youngest. But the, maybe. Whole, yeah. but the whole school was there besides like freshmen, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah. Another thing I want to mention in the same interaction after the female guest speakers had left and the male guest speakers we got into started a fight speaking with to the, us with the female. Ministers. We did. We started arguing with them. But. Mark, I was sitting next to you for this. Yeah. They started doing a Q&A section. I don't even remember this because I, I, I just blacked out. I remember this vividly I because out. I was going to piss you in myself. in group? Yes. I this don't remember. This was everybody. Hey, listen. Let all me tell you. All the guys you. in, in the, the pit. They took all of the male groups and they brought them together and brought them into the library to listen to the guest speakers. Let me, let me tell you. Tyler was just gone. Like, Tyler was not paying attention to none of this shit. I was sitting there laughing, because I'm like, wow, you, like, I don't give a fuck about these bitches. I don't give a fuck about these niggas. I don't give a fuck about none of these people. I don't care. Yes, these people are garbage individuals. They do shitty things. Do I believe that some of them may have done some of, the, done some of this terrible shit? Yes, they are garbage individuals. I don't put it past them, but at the same time, there's nothing I can fucking do about it. I don't 
go around. I don't know these stories. Yeah, you're not friends with these. Exactly. Not like you can exactly. stop them from doing. And the whole thing seemed just like a disingenuous delivery that was uh, scripted and deliberate. And it was to attack the student body. Yeah. For this man to sit here and say that you have a you had a video of guys raping this girl that you knew that she didn't want any of this to happen to her. And then you just to put it in a drawer and, then, and, then and when lock he, we, it away. We, when we questioned him about this. He, and he, he wait, just, hold on, finish, finish the, the yeah, can yes, I talk about the Q&A? We'll talk about that. Yeah, so they start doing the Q&A section and a kid across the, the library from us is sitting there. He pops his hand up and he starts talking about um, experiencing family troubles. Like he, he, he is friends with this girl and she has a bunch of issues with her mother and her mom kind of puts hands on her and he doesn't know how to like help his friend out. And that was the basis of the question. So... The guest speaker gets kind of close to him. He's like, that's a really great question. He shakes his hand, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, see, this is another example of just terrible fathers. Just like just another dude treating women poorly. Don't be like that. And at this point, half of the crowd is like bewildered. Like what, yeah, what are just they in even all saying? of the blatant attack on men? Because like, OK, you can make an argument against like men and the way they treat women. But the blatant just manufacturing and twisting of information that was getting it was like com- com- it was like communist like, russia it's, yeah. it's like you're trying to explain to a politician a problem in the city and then they're like yeah that's why this problem is bad and don't give a shit about your problem so other a few other kids ask questions and they get shot down equally as 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 horribly mark is sitting next to me mark throws his hand up they walk over and then he gets really close. I remember he like kind of crouched down in front of Mark. And I'm sitting right next to Mark. So this dude's like two feet from me. And he gets right down and he's like, what's your name, son? And he's like, I'm Mark. And he's like, what's your question? And he goes, you know, you've been talking a lot about like women's problems and stuff. And you make it seem like all of women's problems are caused by us. And not only are they caused by us, but we have to do something about them. We have to fix these women's problems. But like, why are our problems our problems and their problems are our problems? It seems like there's nothing you that we can do. Yeah. Mark asked this. Okay. So I'm, my face is just getting red and I'm like, I'm kind of shaking. I can see how mad Mark is sitting next to me. And... I almost had to walk out of the library, but he he leans even closer to Mark. <laughs> and closer and he, to punching distance. And he stands up real tall and he looks around and he's like, did everybody hear that? You know what? That is such an amazing question. What's your name again, son? And he says, I'm Mark. And he goes, you know, Mark, that's a really great question, but I'm afraid we're all out of time. <laughs> I lost my shit. Oh my god! <laughs> like chimpanzee noises. Like I was losing my mind. I, you know, I knew there was time left. I one hundred percent knew there was time yes, left. Yes, because they lollygagged for like ten more minutes before they brought us back to the gym. Exactly. And then that's when they made HR cry. Mm-hmm. I don't remember HR crying. She, I did. she what went happened? in front of the whole school. I think you were in the bathroom because I was like sitting near you. You went to the bathroom. He was like, raise your hand if you went through some type of, you know, sexual harassment or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she raises her hand and he's like talking to her and she's crying and crying and crying. So I'm like, all right. I'm going to go up there. Wait, how did he make her? What happened? He started I don't even like remember trying to said. coerce information out of her, and she wasn't the only one that this happened to. Multiple female students were brought down. Like, this and they happened kinda... to me, and then he'd be like, "Okay, so like what? Like tell me, like right now, yeah. in front of all these people." It was kind of like that, and it. I don't know. Just the way he was talking to them was really intense, and the subject matter was really intense, and it was really and uncomfortable he was, he for was all of the some student body. Mega church shit. Yeah, like the just pray God to can God. Heal you. God will heal you. He will help you through all of this. So yeah. I'm just like, okay, I have to Do get your up there. Parents know that this happened. Yeah, yeah. I gave them Afterwards, the rundown a long time dude, ago, but I don't think they remember. I've never seen this teacher who was in charge of this. Um, this is why day two was so pivotal because we all we all um sent the, our emails to this gentleman. Then they gave us the Google form. Wait, did you guys do this as like, like they were like, thank Justin Fatika for coming? Or did you guys decide no, like, let's tell this dude to fuck yeah, no. off? As a a school, lot of us were emailing the school itself and we were bitching about it. And then a lot of us were uh, emailing like other people, parents, yeah. so they um, saw administrations, all of our, that organization. Especially all of the seniors who had this teacher 
as a you know a religion teacher because he taught the seniors and the juniors. So is he the one who made Vatika come? Yeah. So who, after doc? huh? Well, was it Doc? No. It was oh. So when Correct. so the day after he gets all this information from the whole school, right? He sends out a Google form, and it's even worse when we set, when we all talk to each other and kind of put the puzzle pieces together yeah. as to what happened. And I've never seen <laughs> so stressed in my life. He went into, there's like a ministry office. He went into that office, closed the door and locked it. And yeah. I cannot tell you how many emails this man probably got from parents and alumni and people who donate to the school because that is a huge part of Catholic school is people who donate and alumni who pump money into the school. That guy was probably pulling the little hair that he had left out of his head. He I, was a ghost. I want to point out that not only did we have this whole shit show happen, but I believe it was a year later because this was when we had the replacement principal. Oh, when you were a senior. When I was a senior, we had another... And not equally as bad, but like still a really fucking goofy assembly day. And it was what I like to call <laughs> school shooter day. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. So then. the story as I know it was there was this kid and he was flexing like his family's guns on Snapchat or something. I don't think he made an explicit threat on the school or anybody specific. No, he was just posted. I saw the pictures. He was yeah, just, he posting, just posted. Gun like, he was pictures. just poking like, hey, look at all these guns. Like, and. I, I kind of get what he was doing because As he's my a gun enthusiast. My family mm -hmm. also has a lot of guns, and they flex their guns like that's part of what they do. They they go they go shooting. They go to the range. It's kind of like flexing your clothes. Look at these things I spent a lot of money on. Exactly. Like, yeah. like so, um, you know, word starts getting around of this kid talking about guns and shit. You know how high schoolers are; they start to bully each other. Mm -hmm. This kid gets labeled a school shooter. Instantly, <laughs> police show up to his house. Oh, this is hilarious. They they they're handling that with the family. Police were at the school the next morning, and for the next few days, and they would be there right when all the kids like would get there. This, this kid. Is, this is at the height of like not the height of school shootings, but a shooting had just happened. Yeah, but yeah. Like, Lake Catholic like, turned into ago. like Compton High. They were just police at the door. What? Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Mark, Whoa. <laughs> you're doing cops. so well. No, because there was cops at the door scanning Mark. people, checking their backpacks and shit. They, Mark, were, they weren't doing all that. As, I went okay, to school then. As, they weren't doing as all that. someone, okay, well, as someone that. As someone that went to a school that legit, you had to wait outside and get checked in and get checked. It in. wasn't as bad as it, it seemed. That's could what I was told. not have been. I, they, it could not, not have been as that bad. bad. They were not. All like, right, all right, all right. Well, actually, the difference is they actually care about those white kids, Tyler. They care about Whoa. your school. <laughs> I wouldn't so, say that. I think um, I would say I give credit to all the security guards that I was. I went that were at all my Cleveland public schools. Like they really did care about the students. Oh, fuck you, Tyler. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, so in light of all of this happening with that student, School shooter. they decide, you know what? We're just going to have an assembly and it'll eat up some of the class time of the day. But like we're just going to pull all the kids in before the first class starts and we're going to go over this and we're just going to get it over with. We're Which, you know, I understand why that's how the school wanted to move forward. So we so had did a, this kid get in trouble? No, because he didn't do anything to get in did trouble. Did he like leave just, the school? Did he stop going no, to school? No, he couldn't come to school for like a week. And then I thought he was going to shoot up the school. Yeah, was but, he at the assembly? No. But um, He's probably getting questioned by the police. So our replacement principal is giving this speech, and he's who, talking. Who was the replacement principal? Like? He was one of the old principals he that was, had retired, but yeah, now like before since, the one that that the before the principal when we went to school. Yeah. Okay. When you were still Oh, there. did the replacement principal happen because of like the, the embezzling thing that happened? No. 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 no, no, no. no. That's not the, what the that principal was. just jumped ship because he could make more money. Yeah. And the school was going downhill. No, it was because we made him cry and then he, it was he, definitely we no, did it not was make him No, they my senior class made him cry and I wasn't there and they bullied him during the passing of the torch. That's why they all missed that shit. Okay, no, no. They missed the passing of the torch because they did some stupid shit on that top of the school. That doesn't even bull. it no, 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 didn't no. even affect anything. 
Yes, Tyler, it did. All it was was Bro, some silly our, stream. Our senior prank was like way worse. And the student resource officer was just like, damn, you guys are some fucking foul assholes. And then we got to walk the stage. Okay, that's cool. But they were they were pissed about what they did. And then but they because they they're they're control freak fucking suburban we, assholes. We literally the point of the senior prank is to get caught and it is to parade that you did it. Kind and of. Which is why it was and, such an easy, stupid prank. And guess what? Exactly. And when they did it, they were very pissed. And then they were like, no passing the torch. I'm sitting. I'm, they, taped, I'm one of the, they taped lanyards to the school yeah. with, with yeah. duct tape, with mm. the pictures with their faces, and, and which we, means they would have gotten caught because it was their faces on the lanyards. Oh, yeah. And I no, heard, no, no, no. We didn't have our IDs in it. But like I looked into the camera, made a stupid face. Like we all know we were going to get caught. We put uh, the, the stupid, you know, football sayings. At, we duct taped it on the top of that big ass awning. They climbed on top of the building. Yeah, somebody climbed on top of the building. We pissed on the football field. But they don't know that. They do know. <laughs> um, you guys pissed on the football field. Yeah, right where right where the disciplinarian would stand during the football games. <laughs> like, wait, which football field? The the one at the school, like the little one that the freshmen play on. What did yeah. they do to you? No, 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 no. Fresh, no they, they, they were fresh coach. Just, just, just the place where the coach. I'm, I'm not gonna fuck with you. I just remember. Be? I remember. What did he do? Said, All the senior stand? pranks were kind of garbage. Shitty. They were garbage. They were you guys' shitty. senior pranks were ass. Yeah, because our senior All pranks were, were good. Um. Oh, but anyways, as I was saying, he's giving the speech. He's telling us it's not okay to to call people school shooters. And so he rounds out this speech by going, you know, calling somebody a school shooter or anything like that is just as bad as calling somebody any other thing, like you know, any slur or some term for any group you know it's as bad as saying this or the n-word and then oh, no. i started cackling and our english teacher who i'm not gonna say the name of turned around and almost pulled me out like she she threatened to pull me out of the auditorium and like in school suspend me because i wouldn't stop laughing i would have taken that honestly i would have stood up and been like but you really think that calling someone a school sh you know what you know what you should have been like you should have said you notice how you said school shooter but you called it the n-word no, it's not the same thing. That's like that's like uh, Karen's on Facebook saying that the Karen is just Karen as bad. Karen is just like the, the N word. It's just like, oh, you see how you're saying one and not the other? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. That is hilarious. That Tyler is hilarious. Tyler would have gotten kicked out of that seminar. Tyler would have laughed. Phil, what did what did all of the um the minorities of the of the school do when he said that? They all got angry and like just kind of started laughing cuz it's a fucking ridiculous statement. That's Some of it? them started to argue with teachers. Can we try and convince the school to let us give a seminar on something? <laughs> no. Can we pretend to be like missionaries or something? As long yeah. as as long as they don't find this podcast before we do it, yeah. And we're I, gonna record it and we're gonna post it on the OVP YouTube channel. Okay. Pranking our old high school. But on a very serious note, not serious, but back to the whole I'm just gonna um just to round this up real quick. Back to their senior prank. So I came in. The next day, right? Wait, you didn't go to the senior prank? No. No. I didn't know shit about it. So I dead ass came in the next day. And I was like, okay, where's everybody at? Like, there was no one there. It was like a ghost town. Mm -hmm. Got there. That's because there was like a parade beforehand at the church. Like, there's this thing called the senior parade where all the seniors show up at the church. They make like floats and shit. And they, they, pro, uh, Tyler, they did, the if you couldn't school. tell, Tyler did not, he fucked with us. During high school, he did not fuck with anybody outside of even like, even half the even, kids in band hall. He didn't even know about the common events that were going on. He didn't know about common events that would happen. It would be like, I'm going to work tonight, or hey, we're kicking it at, at Filler Marks. Like things that were Jakes. going on with people, or yeah, or Jake's, but like things that were going on with people, events, outlandish shit that people were doing to other people. No clue. Didn't care. He was there to get his education. There was no such I, thing as high school drama for this man. I'm not going to lie to nobody here. Dead ass. I remember. I remember that morning. We go. We went to the. We went to the um church down the street, whatever, and we came back. And then I remember the passing the torch. I remember it being so fucking small. There's like almost no one there. I'm like, where's everybody? Because like, that was also no one, there's no one here right now. So you guys are still seniors. Thing. Yeah. You guys are still seniors. Mm -hmm. The passing of the torch is like so when you leave Lake Catholic. Let's run this back because. So at this that parade, at this parade, I pull up to the church, right? And we're kind of all like Shark standing in the football field. So the coach that, you know, we 
Jesus did things life. to the spot that he stands stands in. All right, wait, quick. I know I just said it, but I want to make it clear that I said it. Remember when we were at the mall and we saw him cheating on his wife? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. That's crazy. Back to the story. So he walks up to me with this dumb ass, goofy smile on his face. And he's like, mm, what did you do last night, huh? I was like, you know what I did? I was on camera. And he's like, oh, well, we're going to get you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm gonna not, willingly not walk like, to the school. Not, and I'm not, not like I scared. just, not like I just told you. You, you know what I did? I was on camera. I just, I just admitted to it. Like it's not we're like good, a right. Good. And, good. and, <laughs> and like, listen, listen. So when I told my parents where I was, because what they did was they walked us into the school first before everybody else that was profess. Uh, what are they uh, moving? To the school. How many people in the in the senior class did this? There was like ten. Was there was like ten kids. No, there was only like ten kids. The rest of the kids yeah. skipped. The rest of the kids. Oh skipped. no, it was skip day. But but still, a, a majority of those kids would have came, and like a majority of kids weren't there. It was like twenty kids max. But listen, oh yeah, because for all the passing of the torches for like our freshman through junior year, there was. The a entire lot of seniors. The entire class. They came in their there. dress down shit because they went and did their. No, it was. During um during the passing of the torch for every other year, it was also the same day that they were doing their um their, their work studies. Yeah. So they were there in their dress down clothes and shit. So so back back to the story. So they put us in this little computer room, right? And Which I, one? I, Is it the health room? Yeah. Okay. So I, I call my parents or I shoot them a text. And they're like, Oh, we're gonna take your phone. I'm like, No, you're not. And then I was texting my parents, what happened? And my parents do not come to the school. They did not come to the school. My dad, who never shows up to the school, so Tony's never been to took Lake off work because I was like, "Yeah, Dad, they're trying to make me like fill out a um, a statement and sign my name." He's like, "Don't, no, don't do that, don't do that." And then he's like, "I'm coming, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming, <laughs> MVP type." So listen, I'm coming. <laughs> my dad is six foot one, and he is he is the most a big beautiful boy. mustache in the world. So he comes to the school, and I didn't know this was going on because there was some other shit going on that I'll get to later. But my dad went to the principal's office, and he's like, he tells, he walks up to the lady, where's my? And he's boy? like, I want him, and he points at the principal, and he looks at my dad, and then closes his door, <laughs> <laughs> and then the secretary's <laughs> phone rings, and then the secretary's hey. phone rings, and he and. And he heard, he's like, I heard him say, I don't want him in my office. So then the president comes out, who's still at the school, wonderful dude. He explained to my dad what was going on. And my dad's like, so you're keeping my son in an office for some silly string, some streamers, and some duct tape? And he's like, yeah. But I'm trying to figure it out because... He he didn't even know. This was the whole, this is the disciplinarian running the show, apparently. Yeah, it was O'Donnell. Uh, this is the reason you got fired. I want you to know. Fuck you. Fuck your whole family. I hate this nigga. He is one of the reasons that I had to leave this school that I thoroughly enjoyed. So I just want everyone to know it's big fuck him. Yeah, and he had a, a huge ego. A shout out to Tony for scaring the piss out of the principal because that was the funniest shit I've ever heard him and do. And the craziest part about the principal is, you know who that principal is, right? Mr. Yeah, Lurch? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> dog from like, I remember from like 9th through 11th grade, like before I left, he was like the coolest dude ever. I was like, you know what? He's he's a real, a real nigga. So, when my thing happened with Doc and I went to OD about it, he didn't give a fuck and basically told me to go fuck myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go above you. And I went to... Lurch and was like, yo, like this is what's happening. And he was like, he basically, he sat me in his office and I missed half of the school day. And he was like, you know what? You know, you should have left this school a long time ago. And basically said, the only reason you're still here is because we get money for you being here. And I was just like, huh? And he's like, you're one of the grant students. Like you're only here because we get money for you. And I was like, nigga, what? And then I don't care. Bleep it out. Fuck her too. Said the same thing to me. It was basically like, we keep the grant kids here. The reason you guys are allowed to do this is because we get double the money. Like, like Joe Schmo over here is paying nine grand to go here. We get 18 grand because you're here and you're, you're from a colored neighborhood. You got the grant too, right? Cause you, you're from Euclid. I know. I paid. I paid. You paid all full. Wait, but I, did you, you didn't come from a school district though. You came from St. Robin Williams, which is another private school. I, I was supposed to get a grant. I qualified for it. But my mom was like, nah, and she just paid four years of just tuition. 
My mom um, paid like nine. My school, nine like ten, my school nine system or paid or like that. for that. Oh yeah, no. My, my school my system school, paid. School system it was six, paid shit for They me. paid six yeah. grand, and then I got other financial assistance. No, but that my, whole school, the way that whole school worked, was fucking wacky, and I hated it. But I like, I loved the people, and I missed Justin Fatika because of fucking Lurch. <laughs> yeah, and. And the thing is, the way the structure worked, Lurch was just kind of existing yeah. and talking to, like, he was basically a diplomat. He's a fucking puppet. He was basically, yeah. And he looked like a fucking muppet. And <laughs> fuck that motherfucker uh, with his with his fucking, uh, what do they call him, pad wing ass hairline. Nigga, finish your story. He finish, had a big finish, butt, though. Finish, finish, <laughs> finish. Up. Up. He had the fattest yeah. ass. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, he was basically controlling the school. Oh, Jake also missed So everything we did senior year was in spite of that man. Everything. And you know what? I don't regret it one bit because- Even his football players hated him. Even his kid hates him. No. No, his kid does hate him. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> ah, I believe it. Ah, ah, ah. We okay, saw him so cheating much. on his wife. I'm going to make it clear again. I can tell you exactly where in the mall we were, too. And the shitty part Fuck is you. he did it in the city where all of the students that he is in charge of go to school. Go to school. And then me and Mark looked at him. He saw me and Mark. Like, the, we were with a group and they didn't see him. But me and Mark saw him. Like, me and Mark, like, looked at him. And Mark was just like, and he was just like, oh, no. And then they left. Mark, finish your story about your senior, about the, um, what's the He cheated yeah. on his wife. So, <laughs> he cheated on his wife. Okay, Xavier. So, 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 as my dad walked in, there was moms who came in of... Cannabis. Tony was the first yeah. wave of Calvary to break these My kids. dad was, no, he was in a completely unrelated area. Oh these moms God. came, and they're, let's be real, they have money. They have influence in the area because of the money. family that they're a part of. And their husbands. And their financial status. So they're banging on the door, banging on the door. We're going to call the news. We're going to ruin this school. We're Tyler, going to pull out all the hey, money. Hey, yada, yada, yada. yada. Mom would have did that. She'd be in jail. Hey, yo, real quick, real quick. I just want this to be said. They, what their parents were saying didn't matter at all. One, because the school went downhill anyway. And then two, the news was, was called on that school multiple times already. That oh, yeah, we went, we, went to, we went to that uh, shit we, did not we went matter. to Atomic Sit Up High. <laughs> yeah, Atomic Sit Up High. And they did Woo! it at JCU where cameras are everywhere. Everywhere. But that's not even, that's, you know what the craziest part about that is? That's one thing that happened. And I'm not trying to say that that's an invalid experience. Like, no, I'm not, like, I'm not going to fake. I'm not going to snitch if you try and make me do a sit up into your ass. But y'all going to have to jump me because I'm running my ones. Like, I'm going to show y'all I'm not a bitch. You want me to show you I'm a bitch and sit up? No. But we could, that's a whole different thing. But there were worse things that happened to kids in the previous years. And the reason the football coach didn't do anything and the news got called is because he was on that state championship team in 91 when they were really doing grimy things to those kids. Yeah. But they were winning. But they were winning. They had Joe Jerovicious. And then my, my history teacher at, at the school that I went to was the starting running back of that state championship team. <laughs> All right. Fuck those so, people. So the, the moms are, the Karens are banging on the door. Yeah, they're, they're, they're saying the we're going to call the news, yada, yada, yada. Like and then the when the passing the of the, tor the torch assembly let out, then there was just the army of kids. And so this room is attached to another room. Since those moms were banging on that door, we went into the other room attached to a totally different hallway. So, oh yeah, so and Lurch had, could talk to us. And they had to move the fucking bookcase for you to do that because yeah, that like, door never gets opened. Yeah, it's like it's like we were um, high profile <laughs> celebrities, <laughs> celebrities moving, like celebrities. moving <laughs> in a riot, <laughs> and we had a security detail and everything. So once That's we got hilarious. moved in another room, Lurch was talking to us. He cried his ass off and, you know, because he wasn't, he's saying, oh, he's not a fit for the job, which he wasn't. Um, so negative. Out of nowhere, we see half the school push these moms over who figured out where we were. They push them over and they start banging on the door. Wait, the, the students are telling the moms where you guys are? No, 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 no. The students, because the moms figured out we were in the other room. They moved to that door, and then once the assembly let out, there was an army of, like, 25, 30 kids that came to that door, moved the moms out of the way, and started banging on the door, banging on the door, banging on the door. Let them out! Let them out! Banging on the door. Free! Free them! Let them out! Ah! 
a hey, bunch of meatheads. Guess, there was football guess what there. color these kids were. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> guess what color these kids he were. do nothing. <laughs> Woo. He, hey, said, hey. he said, free my cracker, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> they were, none of them were black. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. No, nah, there was a couple. There was Another, a couple. Bro, I guarantee the black kids were just trying to go to class and getting fucked around I for sagging. I think they sagging. just wanted to bang and on the door. OD was yelling at these niggas for sagging while moms are banging on the door and he has a real problem to deal with. Hey, time out. I would actually say one of the one of the kind of the realest moments I saw was that day. Actually, was later when we were graduating. They were very strict for I don't do not know why zero. Reason. But they were very strict on the dress code you had to be. Like if you weren't wearing the right socks, you had to go. You weren't wearing a belt, you had to go. They were not playing around. And the crazy part is, you saw none of that shit under the gown. Mm-hmm. None of it. None of it. <laughs> None of it. You couldn't even see the shoes. They didn't let kids walk because they didn't have proper shoes. I legit. Huh? There were kids that didn't walk because of their shoes. Yeah. And there were kid. There were some of the kids that that were. Let's be real. In lower income areas, and they probably didn't have more than a couple of pairs of shoes. Nor did they have a ride to go home to get their shoes. Okay, our quarterback. Our quarterback. Our entire fucking yeah, we know who he is. Yeah, we know who he is. I, I honestly say he did the realest shit I've ever seen him do. I've went to I went to fucking I was in eighth grade with him. He legit was like, nah, if he's not walking, I'm not walking. That is straight up bullshit. Called his mom, had his mom go to the store, bought bought and had his mom like, yo, what's what size, whatever. Mom got them shoes and was like, nah, this this is bullshit. You're not going to let kids walk because they don't have the right shoes on or they don't have belts. Had his mom go get every get whoever needed shit, got it. I legit wore white socks or gray socks because I'm like, okay, fuck it. They ain't, ain't going to really care about socks. Teacher pulled my pulled my things up like, nah, nah homie, you, you need to go get black socks. I'm like, What? So I went to the car today, yeah. They said I can't walk out and get no socks. My mom almost, she she's like, what the fuck did they just say? I was like, I don't even know. But they said I probably can't walk if I don't get no socks. And then she almost got off the car. But my stepdad's like, Cal- calm down. Hand me socks. Said, Go, we'll, we'll be inside in a minute. And he just looked at her like, okay, you was really about to get teased. <laughs> like, hold on. Like, it's, 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 I, to be honest, I was like, if I walk, I walk. If I don't, I don't. I'm, I, do I still get the diploma? And even, even the meeting before. <laughs> do, I, do I still get the, I won! I'm in! And even the meeting beforehand was, it was probably supposed to be like a 30 minute meeting. Nobody gave a fuck. Nobody had an attention span. The guy who was giving us the meetings stopped every time he heard somebody talking. So it was more like an hour and a half of us sitting on these metal chairs and us giving a fuck even more. The time passed. So wait, what time did the time? That's, that's a late day for seniors. You guys can come in, right? Like late? No, we didn't even go to school. We didn't so go to school. We showed like, up, we showed up at like 11 a.m. for this meeting. We got out of that meeting at like 1230 and then we walked at like that. That is the two day. o'clock. I could not remember a majority of that day. Me and him kicked it with you and Jacob the entire oh, day. Oh yeah, we, we kicked didn't... it. That we kicked it for the majority of that day yeah, until I didn't have we school. had to get ready. Until we that had was... to get ready to go do our graduation was, shit. Um, we kicked it with you guys for the entire day because we, we did not care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was done with school. Care. I had already had my ceremony, and Jake had his ceremony at what CSU is that where they have it? Yeah, and we were at the we were at the house waiting for y'all, and. Fucking Mark is tweaking in our group chat like, yo, like these niggas are bugging right now. Now I remember that day because Mark said in the group chat, he was like, yo, I'm like, niggas are really tweaking right now. Because I had, I legit went to, what is it? I went to, we went to the mall. I bought a majority of all the things that I got from the mall. So I knew I had the black socks. I just didn't want to really wear them because like they didn't look good. I wanted to wear the gray socks. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to wear gray socks. But they were really bugging and they were not playing around about those socks. And they took pride in it too. And they they sure as hell did. I saw my one English teacher. She didn't think she didn't think I was gonna make it. Fuck you, bitch. I didn't make it. Niggas really out here living life. Fuck you. <laughs> Niggas thought that, they, they thought I they thought they were gonna stop me from walking. I walked my ass right across that stage. And Tyler, what did you do when you walked across the stage? You shake everybody's hand. Yeah, I didn't. I was say yeah. I was say I had I, no, I had no quarrels or qualms. I understood why people didn't like the dis, the disciplinary guy. Fuck but, that nigga on my mama. I have no issue with him. 
Like, oh, I, I, I like fucking the, with them. Hey, the crazy, the craziest part is that year I got a double detention because I wouldn't snitch on a, or snitch on a friend. And it's like it is like okay, cool. You did your job. I'm not mad. It is what it is. I got hoed so many times by that nigga. So many times. And then you punched a female in the face. See, don't do that. No, I didn't. No, he was he was pretending <laughs> to swing a bat. Like Shaq hey, swing a bat. I'll put it this way. She if was the Indians, right behind If the him. Indians had a World Series ring, that girl wouldn't have got punched in the face. That's true. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> so true. hey, listen. Listen. To anyone out there listening right now, he's completely not wrong. Because if they would have won that night, if the Indians would have won, it was 2018. Yeah. No, if the in, yeah, 2017. 2017. No, 2016 was when we made the World Series. Yeah, because uh, it was that. So, Xavier, if you know, if you know, there's going to do a little background history real quick. If you know, the Indians were oh, down. Gosh, the Indians were no, They were up. No, they were, they up, were up three, three one. one. They were up three one. Okay, whatever. And it was it was 2016 because it was the year after the Cavs had beat the Warriors. Yes. It was the Warriors blew through one lead and the Indians were like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time out. But pretty much, um, pretty much game seven of the World Series. In whatever, Cleveland. In Cleveland. And Xavier was doing an impersonation of the Ron J. Um, Ron J. Ron J. Davis? No, Ron I, was, Davis. I was making fun of Francisco Lindor's bitch ass swing. No, you were doing the Ron J. It was no, Ron- you were doing the Ron J. When yes. he hit the camera. When he hit the yes. camera. Because the ball. Because if you know the if you know the story, very simply, he Ron J. Us, he took us into extra innings. Yes. And With he he knocked it he Fucking knocked it out dinger. and it was beautiful. And Xavier wind up just like him. And this girl. The, the bell just rung for us to go to first period. Hey, the swing was on point, though. The swing was on point, but she walked right into the swing and... And she got dealt with, like, the ball. <laughs> hey, hey, she 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 could have been the ball at that and point. And honestly, she wasn't even mad. She was. It was one of my friends, like, one of my close friends at the time. Me and her were cool. Like, like I, only thing she was I, I used pissed. to go to her house, like, because her parents knew me and everything. And, like... I, they were like, Xavier, don't just stand there. Xavier, go get her paper towels. And the reason that I didn't go get her paper towels is because I know who it was. They ran down the hallway and they snitched and told OD that I had punched this girl in the face. And fuck and her for that. the fucking senior bathroom is right there. And I'm just like, so I'm walking with this girl to the senior bathroom and OD is like, she can deal with it on her own. And I'm like, no, nah, bro. Like, I gotta. And then he's like, no, in my office. And I'm like, bruh. <laughs> Damn it. Bruh. <laughs> I didn't even mean to hit old girl. Bruh. And she tries to come into the office to tell OD, like, no, it was an accident. It was, like, unfortunate. And, like, it wasn't even horseplay. It was literally it, something that happened that was I wasn't even a part of this. Right. I just walked into it I wasn't it even and a was part sad. of it. And, like, it's sad. And I'm it's it's fine. Like, that's my friend. It's okay. And, like, they were like, no, nah, like, oh, God, this nigga doing 25 to life. <laughs> like, like, no. All right. But, okay. So, guys. This has been fun. I punched this bitch in the face on accident and got in trouble he, for He it. really Story did. Story of my life part two. Hey, Story of my life part I'll two. start off the next podcast with this because I didn't even mean to hit this bitch. Colin, don't it's been me. real. Her, bitch. Hey, listen. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow fuck, us fuck on you. Hope you enjoyed the extra long episode. Love you guys. Love you. Have a good day. Love you all. Bye-bye. Ohio Boys out. Peace. Peace.